Hey guys, welcome to another episode of 234 Essential. We're live at the protest ground. They've thrown tear gas at us, rubber bullets, you know, machete. But we stand correct in all that democracy Sorry represents. For the people, by the people, and wait, for the people, by the people, and of I'm the people. Of the yes, people. So. Let's yes, go yes, now. Yes. <laughs> My coach is here. She has soaked. Uh, a rag in kerosene to cover her face. Listen, and we are mounting more pressure on we are mounting more pressure on the political elite Listen. to unshackle this nation. Thank you very much. Over to you, my humble yeah, co-host, who is live on the background. Ugochi. Thank you very much, AOT too. Thank you very much, Nigerians. We are happy to be here in front in, at the front lines of the protests 2024 for bad governance, hardship. And difficulty that the nigerian the, that the average nigerian is facing um yes. and of course reporting from protest ground ugochi the Igbo stallion yes yes thank you um, much. thank you very much <laughs> i want to I give some go. more colorful comments but i can't really think about it i better go we know the protest ground before you now say that you go to an <laughs> too that inspired you to go and collect bullets in the name of democracy see, As you see but we're on the energy let's go mm. that's what i Ladies and gentlemen, please hear my voice right now. <laughs> Me and my household are not leaving my household tomorrow. <laughs> Obviously, we recorded this day before. Any tupa tupa that happens, I will see you people on Insta Blog Ninja or Post Nigeria. Nigeria. Thank you very much. <laughs> no, you'll be at least some of your colleagues will be at the forefront of this protest now, trying to catch the updates colleagues. and stuff. No, the only colleagues is roommates. No, the only colleagues. <laughs> oh my <laughs> word. But I'm serious, I'm really sorry for the laugh. And I really mean sorry for the laugh. But it's not funny. The protest is actually not funny because the reason behind the protest is not funny. But I mean, we're going to get into all of that hot, hot detail yeah. on Please, this episode. I'm so let, let me let Ayo. I'm yeah? doing light hearted energy here. I'm not doing gorilla warfare. Please. Leave Fair. Shoria and Co. I'm very naked. No, you know what? Let's let it flow. You. Let the energy okay. flow. If we if we get down in the gutters, we get down in the gutters with it. If it goes up in the sky, I mean, let's I mean, do it. So I mean, let's go now. If you, Lagos, <laughs> if you see Lagos gutter, you end up with something. You end up with cholera. God, I beg. That's a, uh, let me not cut over myself on top of national this thing. But <laughs> I fell in the gutter this year for the first time in yeah. all my life. I swear. I, and then I'll tell you. You told me last week. Ah, shout out to Telma and my real G Bolu because both of them were there. And no, it was a drastic fall. I can't even shout. I was stunned. Eh? God, I beg. Sorry. But it's all good, child. Sorry. Thank you guys for listening to our last episode, Refinery Bands. If you've not listened to it, please go ahead and listen to it on any platform you stream or you listen to your podcast. Now, if you're a first time listener, 234 Essential is that podcast that helps you know what to do at the protest ground <laughs> to go and fight against the enemy Sorry. and the oppressor. We shall move <laughs> until Zion is free from Babylon. I'm only joking. But I beg you. 234 Essential is the podcast that actually Nigerian life. It breaks down Nigerian, the Nigerian experience for you. So we're all Nigeria here, 234, definitely. Uh, and thank you to bad. all the old time listeners. Thank you for joining us if this is your first time. Uh, we have a whole big cache of episodes. We are at e- episode 198 now. And so Ooh. two more to 200. So we oh, started yeah, off during the pandemic. Uh, and it seems we're about to enter another political pandemic. But all nasty pandemic, not to do us at the end of the day. That's if you want to send us fan mail, you can send us fan mail at 234essential.com. We'll read it. And also, there's a little thing we call release therapy where you bring your affairs of your heart or uh, affairs of your private parts and we have to break it down for <laughs> real time in our limited knowledge that the Lord, the Lord has bestowed upon us. Thank you. Listen, if you take it, if you take our, our advice on release therapy to heart, I, I would implore you to apply caution, you know, speak to the right people. You know, we just given our two, two minutes, two seconds, two to send thoughts to it. Um, also, um, after you send us release therapy, it would also be nice for you to follow us on every social media platform. Um, 
follow us, engage with us, let us know what's happening. Um, we're there, we're there sometimes, we're not there every time, but we're there sometimes, and it's good. It's good energy, it's good vibes. Welcome to the tribe, guys. A hey. Actually, did a little dance for the yep, new yep, for the yep. new guys, and of course for the old guys. We love you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> let us. I, what's uh, happening? Night post. Night posts are still working, but not yet. They are not yet part of the protest, so we got one family, <laughs> just one. And, nobody intercepted uh, this is from it. Somebody. Yeah, nobody intercepted it. This is from someone who has risen from the ashes, literally. Is called the person is called Phoenix. Uh huh. So if you know your group, Phoenix. So I mean, I named Phoenix. I know. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So okay. If, okay. if you know your Greek mythology, <laughs> if you know your Greek mythology, okay. you know what Phoenix represents. If you don't know your Greek mythology, then be proud of your Yoruba and Igbo mythology <laughs> as it is. That's fine. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Hello. This is from Phoenix. Hello. I've been a long time listener of the pod for over a year now. I live in Europe, and you have been. My link to the motherland for updates and morning vibes. Aww, I want to share my perspective you. on the crisis that is looming in the dating slash marriage scene. First, need to first we need to lay down some ground rules to help guide understand to guide understanding and holistic conversation. We say European English holistic oh, yeah. conversation. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> One, this is a macro concept, not micro. We are referring to averages and group behavior, not that individualistic characters. I know mm -hmm. some that did this. Some people will still be lucky to see. It is not an allowed. It is not an allowed in this regional conservation uh, conversation. We are discussing norms, not anomalies. Two, we are assuming that everyone will marry. The concept of choosing to remain single is not a element of the ceteris paribus required for this conversation. Bros, uh, mm -hmm. bros or sis, first of all, first of all. <laughs> Terry's fire boss. Are we doing economy? Are we doing senior secondary school economics? Please. No, all that's the fine language. All the it's call, fine. All the baby call is okay. Say Terry's fire boss. Who speaks lap in 2024? Please. Why? Saying an like economist. I'm just okay. busy. I don't know. Let me not say what I don't know. Okay. Background. 40 years ago, the dynamics of the world was different. It was structured for men. Work ownership of property freedoms, etc., were very patriarchal. This meant that men were averagely more successful than women. So, the standard of women only marrying men that are more successful than them was sustainable. There was someone for everyone with this system. With this frame, framework, men had with this framework, men had more power averagely, and with great power comes great responsibility. Which is Spider Man, yeah, do you understand? <laughs> If you make the money, own the property, and have your right to control my movements, then you should pay the bills and take care of the underprivileged party. The world has changed. We have pushed equality more than ever before, and it sounds fair. One can argue that men are underprivileged, but for the sake of this conversation, let's assume things are 50-50. For every job a woman gets, a man that should previously have gotten it doesn't. It's not right or wrong. It's statistics. That's how balancing averages work. Women now have more rights and benefits than ever in the history of mankind, which is a great thing. The problem is that great power has not come with great responsibility. Uh oh. Women only want to marry slash date up. A man that is a five can date between a three and seven, but a woman that is a five caps a dating between five point five to ten. This has caused a serious misbalance, and Hollywood and Hollywood has not helped. We have perpetuated the belief that everyone, that everyone, every woman deserves a Bridgestone man. Or Bridgerton man, all she has to do is wait. This they sometimes wait till late thirties with that mindset that more, most people are not good enough for them. So, women in the early twenties and in their prime sexual preferred life will tend to prefer successful men like successful men, Yahoo boys, sugar daddies, etc. These kind of men have many options and tend not to marry all of them. Then the ones remaining in their thirties start pressurizing people that that they would have never dated. Men tend to start picking in their 30s while women start declining from a sexual preference perspective. This has created a dynamic where there are strong successful women who are in their late 30s and early 40s. Okay, Cupid's data. Okay, Cupid is, I think, a love site or something like that, or a romantic mm -hmm. site. Cupid's data shows that all that men of all ages prefer to sexually date people in their early to mid-20s. So this creates a chasm known as the leftover women. Mm -hmm. A fourth a 40-year-old man can marry a 22-year-old girl, 
but the reverse is mostly unthinkable. Also, the dating pool is increasingly joined by divorced women. Men tend to, to do better and divorce, after divorce than women. In our 40s, we are going to have an excess supply of single women to a point that they will start hunting for reliable men even if they are married. The question is not balancing. Something needs to be done. I have too many friends who are beautiful, successful, smart, powerful, but single. Our forties is going to be interesting. The balance of power will change. This is a long-term problem. I don't believe in reverting back to patriarchy. Instead, I think we need to educate from infancy. Equality also means responsibility. If you're a woman who is a five, dating a three is, should be taught as normal. Otherwise, we'll be widening the gap and making the problem worse. I'm a 33-year-old graduate of a top MBA, 10 MBA school in the world. And when I look at my fellow Nigerian women in top 50 MBA schools, my brothers and sisters, we have a big problem on our hands. The Oyimbos are not dating them, and I will explain why on another day. Warm regards, Phoenix. Uh, first of all, Mr. Mr. Phoenix or Mrs. Phoenix, or the Phoenix. Uh, Obviously, man. It was quite obvious from your email that you actually are uh, Leonard. Because the way you structured this thing right now shows that you're writing thesis or you're writing a project. Because, ah, Obo, now what? If you get emails like this all the we thank God. We shout hallelujah. We shout hallelujah. Okay. <laughs> Gotcha, how do we dissect this now? Who goes first? How do you want us to go? Tell me. No, you you decide who goes first. Um, go first. Paola, I think I like right. to I mean, okay, should you know what? Let's have a dialogue. How about that? Okay. All right. Let me start with this dialogue. Sure. Exactly. Obvious. Let's have a dialogue. Person stated that it's from Europe or she's from Europe or they are from Europe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this view is very European and first world. Some things apply here in Nigeria, you know, but I don't think it's like like this the, the picture this person has painted doesn't really apply to Nigeria or all, all that like that's a hundred percent. So this is a very, very uh, how do you mean you know, what parts of what parts of his email would I will are you would you be referring to in this? In this conversation, um, let me look for the parts. Okay, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So the part about the data, right? This has created mm -hmm. a dynamic where there are strong successful women single in the late thirties and early forties. Okay, Cupid's mm -hmm. data shows that men of all ages. So maybe they are uh, obviously we are going to have like in Nigeria, we're definitely going to have. Successful women who are not married in within the early thirties and late thirties. Oh no, mid mm -hmm. thirties and late thirties. For what have you? But I don't think it's as rampant as it is in Europe or in North America, as mm -hmm. it may seem. Like I said, uh, it applies here and there, but I don't think it's a full picture. But anyway, so the gist of this email is that this whole strive for equality has created an, has created an imbalance where women are more privileged at work and mm. women now tend to marry up, which is mm -hmm. called... Hypergamy. What's that thing? What's the... Hypergamy. Hypergamy. Yes, thank you very much. Mm. Yes, my learned uh, co-debater. Uh -huh. <laughs> <Excuse So, me. laughs> yeah. But from day one, hypergamy has been a reality, whether in Europe, whether in Africa. Because uh, women always tend to date up, and because there are scarce resources, and marrying a rich man at that time was a guarantee that your life and the life of your children will be taken care of. Mm -hmm. So that is why women date up, basically. Mm -hmm. That was the reason. Mm -hmm. But even to itself, we still see it happens. And in Nigeria, I think it's more. Um, how will I call it now? The economy has now played a bigger part in it. You know, mm -hmm. I was talking to, I think it was, some, was somebody, he was responding to a tweet, right? About, oh, okay. the truth was about, about money and men. Oh, if you don't have money, you can't date me, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. And he responded to it. I replied to him that, I would like for there to be like some sort of data or analysis that mm -hmm. shows how uh, from 2020, the prevailing dialogue has been, oh, I can't date a man who doesn't have money. As compared to mm -hmm. like seven or eight years ago, where the prevailing thought on thought online was that I'm an independent woman, I handle mm -hmm. my bills, blah, blah, blah. 
manager mm-hmm. to be 50 50. I don't know what happened from going into COVID period and coming out of that COVID period where the prevalent thoughts in pop culture and social media is oh, you need to have this kind of amount of money to have access to me, whether you want to date me or sleep with me, blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. But let's keep it to date. It has changed a bit. And uh, in this email, uh, he or she stated that uh, what was the solution? He said, mm, but I think we need to educate from university that equality of is responsibility. If you're a woman who is a five, dating a three should be taught as normal. Brother, sister, them. That is never going to happen. There are some things I hold true in my life that no matter how the world changes, we'll all, it, some things will never change. Right? <laughs> When you're talking about when you're talking about this particular set of people or women, you're talking about the one percent, the extreme one percent, zero point five percent, right? It's going to mm-hmm. be very rare, very, very, very rare for a woman in this Federal Republic of Nigeria, Agbado Republic, mm-hmm. for you to five and you're dating a three. It's not going to happen, brother. Let's leave all that to this thing, this thing apart. It's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. It's the word we from beginning to the end, from the beginning of time to the end of time. Why do, you why, feel the, why do you feel so though? Well, I don't think it will change. There's a reason why, even in this work era, where they're saying, oh, uh, age gap difference, men who are a certain age should not date women of certain age because it creates a, it creates a power dynamic and leaves room for abuse and emotional abuse well, and like, all that. Blah, blah, blah. It still happens. I'm going to interrupt you one second to just write here, yeah. right? Just Let's to talk about just what we're talking about. I mean, yeah. just yeah. Do you mind if you don't? If you mind, if you mind, oh, right, right. Okay. okay. So here's the thing. Not national assembly. <laughs> even even Akba Beauty, the chance some <laughs> idiot <laughs> wine. But anyway, yeah. um, I think that women sometimes there are, there are, there have been women who are married men who are were not uh, um on uh, on par with them. I'm stammering because. I have a lot of emotions in me and I'm trying to coordinate mm-hmm. it because I'm actually overwhelmed as a person. And then just this email also is like interesting as well. It, it brings a very interesting dialogue. So let's actually have it. You know what I mean? Um, I don't know about you, but like growing up, I used to see, I saw, I saw women who were the ones taking care of their families. Where the part of the world that I come from and I've seen, uh, I grew up in, we saw women who were breadwinners taking taking up everything from ca- everything. They were taking care of it, right? Um, so when we talk about stuff like when we talk when, when we have conversations and say society does not agree with it, I don't. Yes, society doesn't agree with it. Doesn't mean that it doesn't happen. There are two different things. Society might not agree with it, but it is something. It happens even when even when it's a case of probably. Let's give scenarios like get created personas. Even if it's a case of um, the the husband being the breadwinner, and then you know something happens, he loses his job, something tragic, you know, he something happens, and then the wife has to step in and then carry the home. I saw that happen all the time. Um, there are also people who married men who, because you know, the older you grow, I think we'll come to, I'll come more to this part. Um, everybody has preferences as individuals. We all have preferences. Um, for you, I was having a conversation with my friend. Let me put it this way. Let me give more real life examples so that I don't create scenarios. I was having a conversation with my friend recently, and she was telling me about the kind of man she wanted because I was giving her an analogy. An analogy that a friend of mine had given me. Big shout out to Reflex. Um, so I was talking to Reflex one day and he says to me, um, the kind of man that a lot of women are looking for are not many, are not, are not, are not um, ever, they're not overly present in the economy, right? You want a man who's this, you want a, there are certain qualities, certain women will say at a certain level that they want in a man. Now, there are so many more women who are also chasing that, 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 sort, that sort of man. And so, because of this, he feels that, you know, there'll be a scarcity of those men and those men are, are, high, are highly, um, since they're more sorted after, they're more sought after, um, they're more, um, probably more promiscuous, 
um, because they have their sport for choice, right? There's decision fatigue for them. They're all, they're always women. They're women gunning after them, right? You know, and I was sharing my thoughts with my friend and she was like, no, I don't agree with that. Um, I don't want that kind of man. I want a man that is like this, like this, like this. And I promise you that my, this friend of mine works in a telecom, one of probably the highest, one of the highest telecommunication companies in Nigeria. She's, she's doing well for herself. Right. Is it and the she one says, that, no, I don't uh, want that kind of man. Is it the one that, sorry, is it the one that locks people's sim over the weekend? No, 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 that one, not that one. <laughs> no, 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 no. The whole country has been, in fact, the country is in, is red. This is called red mm. in Nigeria, but that's by the way, right? And so we're having a, and she was like, oh, I don't want that kind of man. I'm not looking for a wealthy man or something. Mm -mm. I want a man who is working or he's hardworking. And, you know, she talked to something, she, sometimes she put one or two things and so mentioned wanting a man she could mold or some, I don't know. I mean, she let, she later clarified that and all of that, but what am I trying to get at? People's preferences are different. There are women who want to do 50-50 as well as men who want to do 50-50. There are men who don't want to work and rather a wife who will work. Everybody has somebody. Now, the problem is that we are, social media has misconstrued, has, no, the volume of people on social media has created a, a narrative that that is what everybody wants and now this, this is probably the best form of marketing right so if you if i have it of course you're a media person Ayo, you know that bad news spreads quickly bad news is is always trending yeah. once the news is not good it must trend now just because there are more women on social media um call them influencers, um, thought leaders, subject matter experts, I don't know what it is. Um, and I do not say this to shade anybody when I say that, but these women have these opinions that, oh, I want men who, I want a man who is of a certain blah, 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 blah. I don't think that then represents the true desires of every woman. Do you get what I mean? Everybody has yeah, preferences. I mean. And so based off of the preferences, we then choose partners. There are women who would rather a guy that they can, they can, they can handle, in quotes. <laughs> and there are men who want women to handle them. So I don't really get it. And there's a part of this whole discourse that I'm actually really more enthusiastic to talk about. But when we're talking about, oh, Me society too. is not going to look at this thing. And society is not going to do that. Our our perspective matters, right? In every conversation, perspective matters. I like that he gave um, points as to guidelines to help the convers to help guide the conversation. And those guidelines, what I, I, I we should probably look at and then have a this discourse in a capsule because this is not the this is not the reality of everybody. And also Obviously. Nigerian social. Yeah, and even like with a lot of podcast episodes coming out these days and making it into mainstream media and everybody just hearing too many things from everywhere. It's like the, it's like the red car analogy. If you cognitive biases, if I keep telling, if I come today and I say, if you for every two for every two cars that pass on the road, there's going to be a red car. Everybody starts to look for a red car. So just because. There are now more people who are on social media, which is where everybody's eyes are, is these days, who are talking about a certain type of lifestyle. It now looks like it is. It has now, or it's, whether we like it or not, what we consume becomes us, right? If you continue to expose yourself to a certain, I love today, man. God, I'm overwhelmed, but let's get it. If you continue con to consume a certain type of information, th that information guides the way you are. And the Bible says, fiercely, you should guard your hearts. It wasn't playing around. Because the more you feed yourself something, the more it becomes your reality. Um, this conversation we're having about guarding your heart, I had it in mind that I was going to talk about something similar like this today. So even seeing this fan mail is even making me happy, right? 
because we are exposing ourselves to a certain type of information, it now becomes the information, and then we start to consume it and we start to regurgitate it. Unfortunately, Nigeria is a country, and I speak of Nigeria, I don't know about the world because I haven't been around the world. Nigeria is a country that monkey see, monkey do. So if people see that you're doing this, they do it, whether they can help it or not. There was this, um, there's this social project in my head that I just did one day. When women take pictures, it's just like when women take pictures or when people take pictures and they pout, right? How did pouting start? I'm sure one girl somewhere just stayed and took a nice cute picture. She was pouting and it went viral. Or maybe not a girl, maybe a guy. Who knows, right? And it just goes round. And we start to do it without even consciously knowing that we are doing it. Someone wants to take you a picture, you pout first. Why didn't you smile first? Why didn't you frown first? Why didn't you do any other facial expression than pouting, right? This is how information works. And this is how people consume and relate info relay information. There are people who listen to 234 and want to come here for the vibes. There's that. There are people who also consume what we say here as Bible. Unfortunately, I would advise that like, we should always sort for our own answers like have your own ideas have your own mind to things right it's okay to disagree but when we come and we say finite things like oh women the society we it's we think can happen with people that that is not their reality are you excluding them from the big apple or are you but not talking about them or just because their stories are not making it into main media doesn't now means they don't exist do you get what i mean but we then speak about statistics. I don't know if there are statistics for that, but I do know that there are women and men who have the dynamics that society is not always happy with or would not be smiling at. And that also is even a mental thing because we are constraining the provider to either being male or female. And if it's female, then it's such a big taboo. But if she wants to provide for her family, why, let, why not let her? Is she complaining to you? Do you get what I mean? Anyway, that's what I want to say about that. But having like a more roundular discussion for me, I I would like I want I wonder like I want you to tell me I wanted to I want to hear your thoughts about it. This is this person has laid down his thoughts, right? And I like to sometimes have conversations with men, but not about women because. When we talk about women, when I talk about women, or when I hear men speak about women, it's very misinformed many times. It's so sad that I was having a conversation with my friend recently and I was saying to her that, um, she was saying to me that it's so crazy that inside the people that are saying, oh, we want to, we want to be treated as equals. We want to, we want to have freedom to, to do what we want to do, when we want to do it, how we want to do it. There are also people who would rather not do that. And that's fine for them. But when a person like that then tells you that, oh, this thing is like this, you now think that's how every woman is. No. Let me give it life. This thing, this, this, the person, what Phoenix said, Phoenix, I'm really grateful for this email because this conversation is cause this conversation is actually overdue. Like, it needs to be had, right? So in Phoenix email, um, he did say it's a micro, it's a macro concept, not a, a ma micro concept, concept, right? So it's not, it's, it's, it's a, it's a wider range, right? Of thing, of thing is not just a small bite of, bite size of it, right? Um, and he did say, oh, you know, it's not individual. It's all of that. I was having a conversation with someone one day. Um, somebody annoyed me. In fact, I'm going to tell this story. Um, I met this guy at a friend's party. Um, really cool guy, sweet guy. Works in one in one top top organization here in Nigeria. Top 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 organization here in Nigeria. And you know, he he's he's a divorcee or going through a process of he's going through the divorce process. All of that. Anyway, um, we're having a conversation. I think he's completely divorced. I can't remember now. So we're having a conversation, and you know. He tells me he likes me, blah, blah, blah. We exchanged numbers. I thought he was cute. I thought it was cool. It's like, you know what, Gucci, let's get it. <laughs> you know, I'm very open-minded about it because also I met him at a place where um, the person where I met, the place where I met him at, the person is actually such a dear friend, right? So I was like, okay, let's let's keep it cool. 
and um this guy says oh we should hang out um shares details blah blah didn't show didn't call um that's fine you know skipped over that Chad did something to me that upset me. I wasn't just talking to him anyway because I wasn't taking him seriously because he wasn't obviously serious too, right? Anyway, I'm going somewhere one day to meet up with somebody else. And, you know, I just send him a message and he calls me. He says, oh, I'm so sorry. I haven't gotten back to you since that time. Blah, blah, blah. Please, I need to make amends. Where are you? I'm like, oh, I'm going out to meet someone. He's like, oh, who's the person? I'm like, oh, somebody I haven't seen in over 10 years. He was like, okay. Um, he's also around where I'm going to be meeting the person. And he's going to pop by to come and meet me. That he's going to come pop by to see me. I'm like, okay, sure, sure. Um, so I'm out to this person that I haven't seen in over 10 years. Um, also, I would say that we're not like guys, guys like that, because I had only met this person once in my life, only one time. And so this was the second time we were meeting. Many reasons. She wasn't in Lagos, blah, blah, blah. So we're just meeting again. And so, you know, we had it all planned out with cancelled and rescheduled one million times you know so we're finally meeting up so this guy now comes to meet me need i say this person is since early 40s right he comes to meet me and i'm not saying this because of the emotions i'm saying this because of the scenario since this is like data we're talking about but i'm talking about a real life experience um this person mentioned that women in their 30s and women in their 20s some dynamics he mentioned there you know women in their 30s are pressuring men to be dating one thing one thing women don't see men at a certain age this conversation has been widely spread and it's such a huge such a huge i don't say lie but it was it's so dishonest the the words are so dishonest and i heard many times from men these days or oh, that when you get to your 30s nobody's nobody's toasting you how do you know that have you been a woman or you based on your own bad character, you're not even dating women in their 30s because maybe for some reason they're not also needing you. Because a woman in her 30s is not needing a man in the ways where you would say, Oh, he needs to take care of my bills. She's probably already working up her thing, right? So money aside, what's who are you? And I want to meet you. And when men are sometimes faced with that conversation, it gets shaky, right? But that's not, I'm not going to go there real quick. I'm coming back to that point. And so, back to my story. I go out. I'm out with my friend, with this person that I haven't seen in a while. Um, and we're having conversations. This guy is done with the meeting he was having. He comes to meet me, you know, very grand grandiose apology. He's like, oh, I need to follow you to your seat. We need to have a conversation. I've really messed up. I'm so sorry. Beginning at the end of the story. Um, I'll rush to the end. So he comes to the table, sits with myself and my friend. He says, oh, other more things. Other more things. Um, since now I'm here, like, other whatever you guys had, like, on me, I need to apologize. I was like, okay. But then other more things, just other, like, drinks, um, more drinks instead, since he was also at the table. My dear, knelt down there, begged me. Everybody in the restaurant, they were looking at us. Like, ah, this this person, this girl must be a wicked girl. Why doesn't she want to say yes? Me, yeah, I was just, you know, dying and hoping that the floor will open. Let me just even enter because what's this embarrassment? Anyway, this guy says, oh, I need to take a call. I need to take a call. I know that was the last time I saw that guy that night. He never picked his call and he disappeared. Ooh la la. He legit left. <laughs> He didn't come back. I was calling him. He wasn't picking his call, my dear. I sat there, I cried in because nobody even could toast me in that place, first of all, because they first of all use first of all uses reggae to spoil my blues. Then why did you leave me here? Like, in front of somebody that I haven't seen in 10 years. Now let me blow your mind. After much more, I reported, I you know, told the situation to the person, our common friend. And she spoke to him. He called me. He was so apologetic. Told me a reason he, he wasn't able to show up and everything. But here's the thing that then really makes me laugh. So we go out and have drinks after, you know, and I'm just like, you know what? I think that was really messed up. You shouldn't have behaved that way. He said, but you need to calm down. You don't need to be difficult. I said, being difficult so i'll say yeah you should let's learn things let things go 
Um, is it the same person? I was like, no, no, no. The same person. You need to learn to wow. let things go. And I said, no, I've not. it's not that I haven't let it go. I just want to understand the idea behind doing it and how it will be prevented tomorrow. Because even me coming to sit with you here today is a huge risk. Because you could stand up and leave, you know. But, you know, just to understand why you'll do that. He was like, that's the thing about women in their 30s. Wow. I was like, okay. It's about to get interesting. And he says, um, in your 30s, you want to be argumentative. You want to... <laughs> I said, okay. And he says, yes. That's why uh, people don't... Uh, how did he say it all? Uh, that's why it's very difficult for you people to to settle down or something like that. And um, men run away from that. I'd rather be with a 20. So first of all, I have a theory that there's a, there's a very strong, there's, there's a very mad tense chord between men in their forties and women in their twenties. But that's a conversation for another day. You know, that that's why women in their thirties, they will not do like this, like this, like this. And I'm like, yo, that's not true. They will not say, uh, and they can't they can't marry you because they can't marry you guys because you're you're so uh stick to camo. I'll find the exact words and I'll say it, right? Anyway, and I'm like, but that's a huge lie. Like you're here sitting with me, aren't you? You called me, you toasted me somewhere, you saw me somewhere, you asked me out, Abby. So why do you feel like there are no there are no other men in my life doing the same thing you're doing right now. That's one. Two, who are the people telling you that? And why do you feel so bold to tell it to me? I'm a woman and I'm in my thirties, and you are telling me about me. Aren't you laughable? Isn't it actually a joke? Like it's so funny. Like you must really think you have so much audacity. Like you have so much audacity to tell me about me. Why do you feel like you know me? You don't even know yourself. Because if you know yourself, how would you walk out on somebody in the restaurant and you're telling me that I'm being difficult because I want to understand why you would do such a thing? You're an adult. Have a difficult conversation and not make it about my age. What you have done is bad. Uh-huh. If you do that to a girl in her 20s and she's succumbing, she's, she's okay with that, well, great for her. Unfortunately, she will get to learn that you do not reward bad behavior. And I say this because I hear this thing all the time and it really blows my mind. And sometimes, see, I've had so many conversations of recent about this thing. And guess what? This thing, what you're hearing right now is not anger. It's just like sheer irritation. Like you don't leave, you will never be a woman. Like when men, I, I've said it before that I don't, I no longer engage about feministic thoughts with men. Not because of, anything but you will never understand what it means to be a woman so why am i having a conversation with you my real conversations to be with it's every girl that i meet every female that i meet those are the people that i need to be talking to not you you're telling me about the concept the concepts the things that my body can go through your body will never experience them never and you are telling me wanting wanting like why why do you feel, why are you so audacious to tell me about me who gave you the audacity? Like, that's, that's how it feels for me. Because I'm not going to tell you about a man. I don't sit here any day on this podcast and I'm talking about, oh, I talk about my experience with men, but not about you. Like, I don't know you. I don't know what it means to be a man. I have never grown a dick before. And guess what? I'm not so excited to either. But why do you then sit and you ponder deeply, and the pondering never gets you to the point where you say, I can't get this concept. And it's okay. Why, 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 why? It blows my mind. Not only does it take away from the humanity that is me, but it just is so flawed. It's crazy. Like, it really blows my mind. Because why? No, that's not the truth. And I beg to differ. If there are people who are finding it difficult to get married in their 30s, well, men are women alike. Guess what? When I see a man in his 40s that is unmarried, never been married, it's a huge red flag for me too. Because why are you so not married by in your 40s and you've never tried it? Does it not ring of irresponsibility? So you want to be so free because marriage is too much of a commitment for you. Let's have harsh conversations like that. But that's not the idea. 
it's not that I'm trying to beat a person down, but you get to meet a person and then you, you have conversations around it. Yes, there are women making more money these days. Great. There are also women who are spreading those mo that money for their family, whether it's immediate or extended. And I know women like that in my life. And they're, pro they're one of the most genuine people. But here, here's the thing a woman in her 30s will not take. Disrespect. And a lot of you pack it and have the audacity in your front pocket and you so, so, so valiantly move around with it. Why? Why? It's crazy. It really blows my mind. I had this conversation with my elder sister. I said to her, you know, she was advising, you know, everybody, I always come to this point and I say it, leave 30 plus people alone. Can you let us rest in the name of Jesus? Whether man or woman, just leave us alone, please. And I was having a conversation with my sister and I said, oh, you know, and, you know, we're talking about marriage. We're like, oh, you have to be here. Like, it's there. Big shout out to my sister. I love you all the way, you know. And she was like, so what exactly is it? I said, because sometimes the conversation has to now come to four. Like, so let's leave money aside. Because if it's money, I can't think of a way to make my money too. I mean, at this point, at this age, I'm responsible for myself. So I'm going to think of ways to make money, right? And you meet a man after you started making money, which is why a lot of men don't like to talk. Well, in my experience, a lot of men do not also like women who earn so that they can sit on your head. And that's why I say to women all the time on this podcast, please and please and please make sure you have something doing. Who controls the money controls you. That's the fact. Men have big egos, so they don't want to sit at home. Okay, great. They don't want a woman to take care of them. Fine. But you two as my babe, please get a life. Have something doing. Really. Because that person will say tomorrow, don't make your hair because men are looking at you. But it's blowing five women outside. Facts. As a matter of fact, do you know when I got into my 30s, I was thinking, oh my God. I never thought, I never thought oh my God, men are not going to talk to me. So money aside, away from providing, what's kind, who are you as a person? You find that there are not a lot of men who have essence. That's the truth. I don't know about every other state. Let's speak about Lagos. It's difficult. A 30 plus man is telling me at 30 plus that he cannot date, he, he cannot date me because I'm using Android phone. Imagine that and you think that I have a problem. Really? <laughs> See, in this conversation, eh, they really bust my brain. They can't even like give you. They bust it to scatter my brain. But please, when people come, when men want to have audacious arguments, please be quizzical. Ask. Don't make such finite statement about a, a human form you will never assume. And even when you do, you're still a fraud at it. It's never just going to be essentially you. Essentially. And this is no, no, this is no backlash to um, the, the um, LGBTQ community, no. But here again, don't trivialize it. Just because you like have a faint idea doesn't now make it the actual thing. And then you just come and you just see that. Come on. Ask your 30 plus friends. Yes, it might be difficult, just like every other person. But then again, it's not it has nothing to do with sexually unappealing. <laughs> what? Please. The human body is always changing. People get into menopause in their 20s. So let's be serious. Well, the female body, I don't know about what happens to men, but like, yeah. Do you get what I mean? Please. Wusa. <sighs> Wusa. I legit went on Iran's. <laughs> so that, that's, well, that's my today's therapy. <laughs> we'll see you we'll again for the next therapy session. You're welcome. Please, no. uh, reminder that you have to it's the next therapy fees. So we can <laughs> I don't have therapy. Me, I Thank need therapy at this point. Uh, I actually need therapy too. 
<laughs> Therapy is expensive. I beg, I beg. It's shawarma. See, I ate shawarma today and I felt like I was overdoing it. But you know I, I can't eat shawarma again. You know I can't eat shawarma you can't again. Eat... Why? Marinese? No. Thanks to Apoko Doctor. He has put the fear of the Lord what? in my heart that if you eat shawarma, you will die. So, now I'm disgusted. I'm sure that's not what she said. <laughs> so, it's just the processed meat he was talking about, not really yeah. about shawarma. Not... So, you don't eat the way fear as well. Thing. You know the guy is a fear monger and everything. Yeah. A, so I've said of Shaoma. Anywho, thank you, Mr. Phoenix or Mrs. Phoenix or whatever appellation you want to go by. Uh, what what else can we say? Uh, first of all, that was a very good, very good email because it's well written. Yes, it was. And it gives your own POV from an European stand, and we've given our own our own POV from um, a Nigerian stand. As you bad people say. You can't shave a man's head in his absence. So we can't talk about That's what's right. happening in Europe, in London, or Amsterdam, which is very urbanized. And, you know, it's more uniform. In Nigeria here, we have different pockets of reality. There's the Lagos yeah. reality. There's also the Ebony reality. There's the Yola, Yola um. reality. There's the Anabra reality. So we cannot access the same, uh, or we cannot see the same things that you see. At the end of the day, even though there's an underlying thread of patriarchy, hypergamy, and all that, all that. And Ugochi, as Ugochi rightly said, social media is a bubble, it's an echo chamber. And when you have all these tweets floating and there are certain podcasts that have an agenda because they need to make up, they need to uh, justify the investments that, that has been put into their podcast. Because it's not easy, easy to rent studio, to do mic, to do makeup. See, and, and just conversations, really, on social yeah, and really. they say And they say things that they know will trigger the algorithm. You now begin to think, oh, all women are like this, all men are like this, you know, yada 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 yada. There are people that are fine and okay doing what they do. And, you know, they don't play according to the rules and everything. But anyway, thank you for sending this thought provoking uh, email. At least it's better than sending us a very dark man email or uh, 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 is about to be released email. But thank you very much. Give us email that thank tests you. our IQ. We went to university, so please give it to us so that we know that yes. Because at the end of the day, if you consume too much of Nigerian social media, you become stupid. So once in a while, you need that that brain caca. That one I would just hmm, okay. It's not that uh, I, I don't think men should be wearing Van Cleef jewelries, or I don't think men should be dancing inside. Is that a conversation? That was what somebody said. I'll tell you what that person is a very pop- that person is very popular. She said that oh, in wow. my opinion, I don't think you should be wearing Van Cleef jewelries. So. So what do you want men to wear? Do you want us to wear sackcloth and just cover ourselves with ashes? Tell me why. Be wearing beads. Be wearing beads. Because, side note, there's also, Sorry. I would say all women, but I've seen some women uh-huh. say stuff like, ah, if my have, if my husband has like skincare routine, then I don't think, no, if, if, I, if I'm if i dating a man that has a skincare routine, I'm, I, I, mm. I might think he's gay. Ah, ah. ah Excuse me. God. The challenges are a lot though. No. no. What is happening? So I should just go over. Right. Or uh, why is he going to the gym? Who is he? Who is he making? His, who is he uh, shedding weight for? Uh, so that one is jealousy. It's it's personal jealousy. Do you prefer I should go and die? That you see, do you, you see no? Or you say why are you wearing a shower shorts outside? Or you're wearing but because we are in a we are in a tropical region. I now wear jeans. It will not be hot. It will damage your sperm cells. Let there be circulation, ventilation, please. <laughs> I'm begging you at the end of the See, day. The thing is, at the I end have of the day a question is, for you. I should. It's the question is about the conversation, the conversation we're having, right? Okay, so okay, you're okay, a 30 okay. plus man. Yes. You're a 30 plus man and I want to hear your 30 plus opinion about, <laughs> first of all, this age, yeah, because the truth now, we're having 30 plus, this is a 30 plus Which, day, yeah, Irina. So what's the question? Age what is gap? So yes, age gap? first of the yes, the age. Let's 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 say the age gap, the age preference. Mm-hmm. The age gap, the um, um the age preference, as yeah. well as and this is from a Nigerian perspective. We're not talking about Europe, you know. Abroad, yeah. there's already everybody is busy for their life. So like I'm, I understand, probably understand like the perspective he's coming from, but like in Nigeria here. 
Um, yes, sir. What what is what is what is that what has that experience been like for you? If you have a dating experience with somebody in their thirties, in their thirties, that would be great to, to just like hear what's happening really in the dating scene in the, on that level. Okay. Uh, so age gap difference, age gap reality in the dating scene in Lagos. And I'm using Lagos because Lagos is urbanized, so I don't know about other places. Mm-hmm. Now Lagos they bombing, so now Lagos I did. Mm-hmm. I never move to London. I don't go. I never go move go Abuja or Johannesburg. Um, I think there is some sort of how will I put it now? Liberty, right? Mm-hmm. That social media doesn't show because social media is pretentious. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Where twenty year olds freely mingle, go on dates, have relationships, get married, have sexual affairs with men who are older, right? Mm-hmm. And for once, from the little conversations I've been able to to glean, little conversations, I didn't say I did 1,000 interviews, though. I did sample size. Mm-hmm. No. Mm-hmm. This, this young lady say, oh, they prefer dating guys who are older because they're more mature and, mm-hmm. you know, they... That the guys within their age range don't have sense, mm-hmm. basically. That's what they say. They don't have sense yeah. and everything. Yeah, that mm-hmm. they prefer older guys. They're more mature. Mm-hmm. Some will say, "Oh, they're more giving." Some will say they're more relaxed. They don't mm-hmm. yada 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 and all that. And there are also men who prefer younger women. Mm-hmm. Some will say, "Oh, their blood is not yet. Their blood is not yet hot. They are still calm." Some do it for obvious physical and sexual reasons. And some is just honest. Oh, they met, they fell in love. Simple as that. Because let's not discard the fact that it is possible for people within to, to have an age, to have a huge age gap and still fall in love mm-hmm. normally without any, any agenda. The 20-year-old is not dating because of money and the 30-year-old or the 40-year-old guy is not dating because of your body or because you are, are more, how will I put the word now? Uh, pliable. Because me mm-hmm. I will go school. Everybody throw English. Throw it's okay. I throw my own pliable. You really lag at this finest. Thank you very much. I love you. So that's what I've seen. The unfortunate thing is that because of the circle I'm in, which is more of entertainment media, right? It uh-huh. is very heightened. The, re- the kind of relationship that 20 years and 40 years have is more heavily transactional and it's very heightened. I'm not saying it's all yeah. of it's like that all of Lagos society, but when uh-huh. you now distill it down to that micro microscope of oh uh-huh. celebrity music and yada 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 yada, uh-huh. it now becomes you know uh, very very hugely transactional. There are people uh-huh. I know in this at least you are even talking about thirty years old thirty year old dating people who are legal. There are thirty yeah. year olds dating who are not above eighteen. Uh-huh. Huh. Yeah. I want the, the yeah. one day the, the breeze go blow and fire fire ash go. I don't want to mention anybody new. And people yeah, turn the right. blind because oh, this person is of influence, he has power, he can give me some sort of credit if I'm dating him, and uh-huh. the whole thing of uh-huh. oh, he's a star and everything. And you as a uh-huh. guy, just to boost your ego status among your clique, right? You are uh-huh. holding on to body who's fresh at secondary school probably you know that whole space of you living secondary school about to write jump you're hanging out mm-hmm. with a babe like that it's 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 normal it's uh so that's my own pov of it but please know that my own pov is not as expansive it doesn't cover from sokoto to delta states you know past okay. lagos you know past lagos mainland and island it's usually island now it's in me i feel see at the end of the day mm-hmm. we're in a culture where these young women are the ones making moves to the other guys. You'll be shocked, you know. I don't think anybody will be shocked. There's also that, actually. Yeah. I was, one time I was saying something that, oh, it's time like, so it's time for oh, young girls to stop um, um, hanging out with older guys. And they was like, what do you mean? I don't understand. And I'm like, whoa. So that's the first time I knew that what we see on Twitter is not reality. That I think that's people just... Okay. Posturing, posturing as saints, as woke saints. Well, in reality, you know, that's what happens. 
and let's not so I don't try to I think when I was younger, obviously you'd be like, oh, transactional relationships are bad, blah, 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 blah. Women are just dating for money. So now, I'm looking at the I'm looking at the economic terms now, right? Yeah. Bro, bro, first of all, do you know what the economy is saying, fam? Then if you as a woman know that my beauty plus my personality at the end of the day, because personality also matters. Billionaires mm-hmm. don't marry a job at the end of the day. Can take not only me, but me and my family away from poverty into wealth and our generation will never suffer again. Do you think I will not make that move? We have to think of things logically as human beings. You know. It is it what it is what it is. It is what it there is. Also, there are also if guys yeah. that do the same thing as well, that marry babes for their families' names. I don't want to even mention let me even put it in the in the Zencaster for you. Please, right? Please. There are guys who do that thing. I don't blame you too because you're looking at, Omo, this is my chance to move from my point life. A to point Z. Exactly. Right? That one is Let's fast. And this is what used to happen in the olden days. Whether our, our local communities or even in old time England, we won't talk about Game of Thrones. The exactly. reason people were married back then was what, to consolidate power or to improve the, the social standing of your family. Strategically. Or what, what, what Disney came and told us and they live happily ever after. They love Fairy each other. Fairy tales. Married, now brought and now and again. No, coming to America now deceived us again. The Prince Ake will now marry again from, from the ghetto in New York. Bro, once you, dis- once you detach yourself from that whole Hollywood fairy tale and, and look at reality, you don't you can't, you, can't judge, you can't judge people at the end of the day. The girls who stand on the streets are not doing so because oh, they just want to have sex with men. Go into most of their backgrounds. Those girls are from abject poverty. And in a country that is patriarchal and is highly sexualized when it comes to young women, or more, you know that this is the best play for me. At the end of the day, when it now works out in the long term, is a different issue. We leave mm-hmm. that to the sociologist to go and find out. But people make these decisions based on their in, in the interest of their future. So mm-hmm. I can't really judge everybody at the end of the day. Do what do what that will, as they say, you know. So also, to each and also economic terms. There's one day I saw one body on Instagram, and I look at everything shared. I'm like, at the end of the day, this guy is going to be spending a whole lot of amount. Mm-hmm. Just to keep our body this way, right? Yeah. And you, I'm talking to men now. You mm-hmm. as a mama boy, that you don't have your shit together, right? I'm not saying you have your shit together, but you are still hustling in in, in certain areas, mm-hmm. right? You might not be the most presentable. You might not be the, in terms of work. You are not the most productive. You don't even know where your career is going to, and exactly. you step up to a woman who knows. This is how she wants to look, how she wants to be approached, right? And you say, oh, you want a relationship with her. She turns you down and you're feeling bad. Are you not generalize all women like that? Bro, this is, let me give you a perfect scenario. You want to buy mm-hmm. a car and you have 1.5 million naira. But somehow, your leg deceive you to go to Coscaris to go and price brand new Benz. It doesn't make sense. Exactly. It doesn't make sense at the end of the day. So you can't judge a woman who is on her A game, right? Physically, uh, behavior wise, emotionally, and you are still looking for your way through life, and you are judging the other person. Now, that's that's a dick move. That's a that's a incel move. Incel exactly. move, and incel the incel shit is getting big in Nigeria. It's getting really big in Nigeria. I see young men who feel that women owe them a response, a favorable response, that time and attention and their body, because. They walked up to them, bro. Even the hottest of men have women who turn them down, and the world did you not care what I mean. No Brad Pitt, you're not Idris Elba, my nigga. You're not our brother in the uh, UK, Dancing Idris. So calm the fuck down at the end of the day, you know. Just do your own bit, make sure that you are doing your own part as a human being. You develop yourself, you are good, you take care of the people around you, right? The people who matter, 
then I start judging one baby on Instagram, on Twitter, yada, 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 yada. It just doesn't make sense. That incel shit is highly dangerous. It's highly dangerous. So, I know the day, as you mature, you will notice mm. that what used to upset your parents back then doesn't upset them this, nowadays. Because they look at life and like, Omo, what else is the move now? What else again? Like, bro. What else is playing? Life is, see, bro, at the end of the day, if a body says she wants to say, oh, it's to the highest bidder, bro. She just wants the good, bro, is it not the good life all of us are chasing? Don't vex, don't be emotional. When you're having emotional responses, that's some weak shit at the end of the day. At the end of the day, bro. So, every, and again, it's just clear that people do not communicate. You know, people don't tend to no, listen to that. No, people do not person. ask questions, first of all. They don't ask questions. They, they make finite statements. Yeah, because That's your social discussions, if they ask me something, I'm like, oh, I do not know because I do not have the POV of a woman. So I do not know. If you ask me about a man now, I will tell you. You know, so it be because I don't try. At least I'm not yet my gender. So everybody needs to, you know, have a lot of applying uh, your brain. Also, I think the level of education in Nigeria also uh, affects this whole traditional. The, un- how, like, the, the what, what do you say? The the level of what? Um, education is ah, affecting okay. our cognitive thinking at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Yes. It's not as if we are not making, we are making very tiny, tiny progress, but you still find a chunk of people holding on to theories that have no backing just because it was stated in your community oh. or your cultural setting that this happens. You get me? And you hold on to mm-hmm. it as belief. And you need to oppress people, oppress women. At the end of the day, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make Same. any sense. It doesn't work in your flag. You know, I was telling you something. I, I said uh, some episodes ago, I was saying that I was watching, I started to watch dating shows. Oh, I decided yeah. to watch dating shows because you really want the um, pop the balloon. Not just the pop the balloon one. I mean the pop the balloon one for well, let's see, let me see what's happening, you know, to speed dating and how they're going about it. Because I'm actually interested in the conversation on speed dating, right? Like how does it happen? Anyway, that's by the way. Um, but there's this yeah, no, no, that which one is not Nigerian? The pop the balloon one. Oh, no, the everything is the one you're watching is not uh is so not Nigerian. I'm watching, right? No, the both of them are not Nigerian, right? Um okay, okay. there's this it's the the Indian matchmaking is on Netflix. You can oh, it's a that's series, nice. you can just yeah, M Sima Auntie. Really interesting. You know, Indians um Indians, the, in, India, the Indian culture is very different. First of all, the, the woman pays the guy's bride price or, you know... I was shocked when I um, found out. I was shocked when I found out. I watched three exa- idiots. You, you know, three idiots. You know, exactly. A scenario like that, I'm like, huh? I don't think it makes sense. <laughs> yes. So, it's, it's a very different culture. Yeah, boss, However... Uh, to them, it makes sense. Eh? Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, I said I mean, to them, I mean, it makes I mean, sense. Yeah. yeah, to each their own, right? So and yeah. the other thing is, um, um, they they also they believe in matchmaking a lot. They I, I, so they have to oh, yeah. they, they yeah. call it they, they divide their marriages into two. Is it that you have a love marriage or you have um or you're being match made and matchmaking is more we're taking the higher percentage because like the 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 they do that's that's their culture right it's their thing anyway. Um, and I've been watching it for a while now. I th- I'm actually done. Uh, I think it's like three seasons. Uh, I think yeah, three seasons. I don't know. I just keep watching. I just watch them. Um, when it finishes, it finishes. That's what I've done so far. Um, and for every of the women who were on, excuse me, both guys and girls, you know, that were on that that down that um, what's it called platform or on that series on that show, it was very clear. Everybody said stated clearly what they wanted right so for matchmaking go off with it you know say this is what i want this is what i want this is what i want right and the matchmaker sima auntie always try, tries to make um try to ex- try to explain to the people that you can't get a hundred percent person you can get 70 percent you can get 60 percent you can't get 100 percent, right so you take what's what works with you um and then leave the rest now 
when you hear people in their thirties, forties talking about partners, that's what it is. Partnership. They're looking for partners. They're not looking for eh, eh, ah. If you don't like, and this is wait, serious, so this is not for dating. You are looking to marry a person. You look for a partner. And love is not enough, neither is money. Um, in um my boy, the one boy story, um, can I hear, can I just say something in Igbo? I'll say it in English. Say if you marry, and he said it in English, I think, or no, they wrote it the the caption, it was in English, right? The what's that thing they write under? <laughs> anyway, the subtitles. Subtitle. Um, exactly. If you marry a monkey because of money, when the money goes, <laughs> the monkey will remain, right? Now monkey. The older you grow, and this is me who has been, I like I would like to say that to a to a large extent, to a certain extent, I'm self-aware, right? I've watched myself from my twenties now into my thirties. And I also have friends who are in their thirties. A lot of my friends are in their thirties, right? And I see the conversations are now different, not for a sake of want to settle down, but more of a sake for, from the perspective of, so who is the person that now complements the life that I have? Do you get what I mean? There's a difference. Yeah. My friend said something to me recently. She said, Oche, I want to, my head has, like now my head is calm. When I was in my 20s, I would just talk to me, bah, 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 I'll just give you back. You know, but like now you're calm and you want to listen. Okay, so what are we talking about exactly? One thing I find personally is that men can be very vague sometimes. I need you in my life. As what? Somebody will actually chat to you up. I need you in my like for what? What do you need me for? As I, as I ask you. Do you understand? Or your shoe or your furniture, who knows? And I, I find myself these days asking these questions because you need to be clear. When you leave things all up in the air, is when they start to tell you, eh, but don't you know? Didn't you get? Yeah, a big girl. No, I'm not a big girl. I don't have sense. Please tell me. Let's do I'm actually so daft. You need to tell me exactly what it is. And like you find yourself sometimes in, in relationships that just keep spiraling into one place. And you, you know, women were very dreamy. Ah, once you meet a man, you've started to build your future around him already. I would implore, please, women, young women out here listening, 20s, 30s, I don't know about 40s, but in your 20s, if you're a teenager, listen, pay attention to the person in front of you. Don't imagine the person the person is going to be. Pay attention to the person directly in front of you. What happened, what used to happen in my 20s was that I'll, I'll be dreamy. I wanted one kind of love. You know, the love that, according to Ayo's, um, according to Ayo's data, Disney showed us. Oh, my God. I'm butterflies in my belly. Right now, the butterflies are chilling. Because only me by myself, I've risen all the bills that I'm paying. And so, it's not about the butterflies. It's about what are we doing now? Like, what are you coming here for? How are we arranging ourselves? Do you understand it? Because this thing that we are going for now, we're going to introduce more people. So what's happening? We're introducing family. We're introducing children. You're introducing friends. A new life together. How can you be with somebody? After, after going to your 20s, then you're in your 30s, then you marry somebody who tells you, oh, you, you can't be with your family like this, or you can't be with this set, set of friends. But you met me with them more. Right? Like, I'm so confused. You met me... And we're good or like those kind of conversations. I would say that not everything is white and black, and some things are passed on in gestures and um and um what's the word now? And in um mannerisms, yeah, that's the word. In gestures and mannerisms, some things are not so white and black. But then again, when you talk to a person in a certain level, you don't expect her to be thinking as somebody that is be below the level. If you want a woman who is in her 20s, then go for that. That's fine. If you want somebody in their 30s, then go. If you want somebody who has their shit together, do that. And that's not age sensitive. People get Some people get their shit in their teenage years. Some people in their 20s, some in their 30s. It all depends on what you want personally. I, I, I say this and I have these conversations every now and then with men. Men like the feigned idea of innocence. 
And a woman in her 30s is not innocent in any way. Whether she be a virgin or not, she's not innocent because eyes don't see 99. So, like, she's not going to be scared of that one that's going to come in her 30s. I can only imagine how women in their 40s are owning their shit too. Do you get what I mean? So, it's no more, it's no more games and, and gimmicks here, which is what a lot of men want to do. Play games. You say, I'm broken up with this person, but you're messaging them. What are you doing? You want to go back to them? Or oh, what? I'm so confused. I want you in my life. As what? You are the love of my life. Really? What is your life like? You ask harder questions. And a lot of men don't like uncomfortable conversations, hard, hard conversations, difficult conversations. You don't want to have them. Because no, no woman in her 30s is going to be talking about, ah, oh, babe, when I was when I need to go and do my, um, no, nobody's talking about that anymore. No disrespect to anybody when I say that. But no, but nobody in their 30s is thinking about that. Even at some point, certain points in your 20s. In fact, once you start to walk, Seth, there's just some bullshit you can't just take anymore. That's the truth. Because now everybody's, it's a level playing field, mostly. And I don't think it's wrong to be aspirational. If you want, if you want a man who has more than you so that you don't need to do too much, great. Because my sister, my brother, my sister, body is playing somebody. You don't want to do that. So please, and I say this especially for the gender part. When men want to have conversations about women, ask them. Don't say to them. You have no right to say. You are not a woman. You can give your thoughts on things. But don't make finite thoughts or words. Don't make finite, finite statements. Oh, this thing is like this. Why? And the women in Europe, because the economies empower women, right? They, they make the woman know that she's not, she's not under, she's not under the souls of anyone, anyone. And this, this is not to also disrespect some unique cases that that um some people are experiencing. I can't go into all of the details, but like she now has her shit. She doesn't need you for provision. She needs you as a partner. Can you be available emotionally? Can you be intentional? Are you going to put her first? Are you going to consider her? Are you going to put in effort to be better for yourself first and then for her? Those are the conversations. No more now about eh, who's going to pay my hair bills, who's going to pay my nail bills. And if you do meet somebody in their 30s who's still about that, great. But if you're looking for something, then look for that thing. But just know that power with power and money are very weird, very massive. How do I put it? Very atomic um, and com combination. Money and power. Anybody who has money is already like has the power to decide for themselves what they want to do with their lives. It gives freedom. So how do you tell a person who is free that she should behave in a certain way just to please your ego? If she loves you and she does it, great. But no, it's not your right. End of rant. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Phoenix. Uh, thank you. Or Mrs. Phoenix. Thank you for sending the email. That has thank led you, us to Phoenix. One hour plus. Uh, so now let's, do, let's continue. Um, <laughs> How was your book, Ugochi? In very, Jesus, very... So you have to... I'm going to abbreviate. Everyone's abbreviating now. <laughs> How was your book? Hey, good, I beg. First of all, I almost... I had food poisoning. I was really sick. Hey, wait, wait, what's your Yeah, my dear. Now they go by. I know what's cast the name of the business because... But they sell small chops. Anyway, and they oh, now make food. I know. Don't taste that you buy small chops. So. <laughs> you understand? I ate the food and I almost lost my life. But thank God for the blood of Jesus that covered me. Um, Amen. And it so happened. Do you understand? It so it, that happened. That happened and I couldn't go for Paul's wedding. Sad. Big shout out to Paul. She got married over the weekend. Yeah. See, I was going to be all of that. I see. I say me maybe say I don't really wear the clothes before. One thing about me, I don't pick outfits before. As I feel that okay. with me, that's how I dress. Yeah. 
But me, for this post wedding, I planned myself because I knew that I wanted to be comfortable and I wanted to, you know, I wanted to show up and dance. My dear, my so food poisoning, no grimy go. So I was, I was home and breathing in pain. Um, last week was good. Um, grateful for the things that that go through that happen in my in our lives that we don't talk about anywhere if to or to, to anyone. Grateful for ha- how God takes care of that. So there's been a lot of gratitude in my life of recent. Thankful for family and friends. Um yeah, I am keeping it brief. I do I don't know, it was a great week. Um some things happened that really tried my my that tried me tried everything um but learning from the week most importantly is guard your heart um even the bible says we should guard your heart right because yeah. out of it is born good and evil or good or evil and they talk i mean this is not verbatim but you get what i mean um Sometimes you're absorbing some sort of information too much that it starts to even affect the way you're thinking. Um, I'm learning to pause and then I'm learning to move slower and appreciate the slowness. Um, there's some things that I've rushed into. There's some things I've also talked too much about that, you know, I've given over given information and it's come to sort of bites me in the ass i've had to sit with myself and ask myself questions anyway but i'm really grateful for health um yeah i'm really grateful for health and, and family for sure that's my my week in a nutshell gratitude me filled with gratitude i'm grateful right, for that i'm alive and here you know because it All could right. have been worse but yeah yeah so tell I'm me sure. are you <laughs> Yeah, yeah, my week was good. Shout out to Paul, first of all. Um, that was the first ah, big shout out to Paul. Paul. <laughs> first week for a special wedding. I saw her picture. Yes, yeah. Shout out to her. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yes, yeah. Uh, my week, um, it was, I think they want to kill us in our office. It just be on work over time. I nearly wanted to, I'm like, bro, at the end of the week, I just slammed my laptop shop. I said, no, I'm not doing it again, please. <laughs> Don't come and kill me. Um, I went out on Saturday. It was nice. It was good. Um, done a lot of like small business moves. Hope she pans out in in the, in this coming week. You guys will see what I'm talking about. Anyway, I have like at least one speaking engagement. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Then uh, one Amanda. teaching engagement also, which is crazy. Also have another teaching. podcast engagement. Yeah, actually, almost. Same account. Yeah. In the so university. In a specialized program for people who want to enter the music industry. Fantastic. So like an MBA. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, okay, like okay. an institute. Yeah. Uh-huh. So it's about African music history and all that. I also have a podcast that I've been invited to, to talk about music again. Uh-huh. So my next week is going to be busy. So this weekend, I'll use it to relax. I uh, please, I beg, Love I beg. It. Because uh, the hustle and no bustle. To capitalism. Yeah. <laughs> Please, no, you can just the wear and tear of the body, mm-hmm. Edjo. Exactly. Please. So that's how my week went. Sir. It was cool. It was I? It was I? Why are you did try you? Actually, oh, you did really try. Maybe. You know, it's yeah. Me can like give you. Yeah. Well done. Thank you. Thanks. 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 Okay. Oh, X wow. of the week. Let's go. X of the week is for my humble self, and this is for. <laughs> and if you listen to radio in Nigeria, you will know this particular thing I'm about to, to read right now. So I tweeted earlier in the week. You know how I know Nigerians are not are not making it out of the ghetto. Uh-huh. Since 1932, when radio broadcast started in this country, OAPs still have to remind Nigerians to switch off their radio when calling a station. Huh. See, I was on my way to the it's island. Rapidly. I was on my way to BI on Saturday, mm. and the the ride I was in, the guy turned on the radio, and people were calling, and they had to still remind people, please, please turn up your radio set. Why in twenty twenty four? 
bro, they're going to, need to hear your voice. You are speaking to them already. Radio, by the way. <laughs> you know that's the funny thing. Radios have disappeared in the digital life. At this amount of digital life. It's so crazy. I don't have a radio. I don't have a radio set, which is weird. I'm which going is to buy weird it. Which who produces radio? Like if I go to the sh- no, to the they do. Like, all those are bookies. Yeah, you but, don't see them with radios. China is pumping that those, shit. But imagine you go to all those fancy stores where they sell like hundred inch flat TV screens, and I say, please, do you have a radio set? No, like, I. We need to bring why? back the radio culture, and we actually need to bring it back. Yeah, and the only thing that the iPhone doesn't have for some reason is a radio application. I know Android Can you download it though? You can download an app for it if you want. Uh-huh. But it doesn't come installed, pre-installed. It's not like a native uh, app. Of course not. The uh-huh. app system. I'm like, bro, radio is still big though, because there are a lot of millions of people who still listen to radio. Of you know. course. When you listen to Nedu, Nedu has the show in Wazobia where oh, everything they just, just, just come and talk about their problems and hoping looking uh-huh. for a solution. Uh-huh. To listen to radio, nice time radio is still big. A lot. There's this well, lady. This is around three a.m. four a.m. So the premise of the show is that you call, and you and you basically just talk about yourself, and you know you are looking for people who come and date you. That you need to be in a uh-huh. relationship. So do my interview That's like what's your name, your age, your hobbies, likes and dislikes. We we'll go to people who are calling. Of like course. The and this were like. The real Nigerians, not all we that for me, uh, in a way, they're a speaking pigeon to us. I'm like, that's oh, what's up. Like, ah, <laughs> your mind was all those, romantic, all those romantic shows at 12 a.m., 1 a.m., reading of the night, reading of the night to huh. Shalatops. Yes, yes. Oh my god, my mommy listened to that. He hate that guy. <laughs> First of all, <laughs> they, they love that guy, his voice. Oh my lord, I understand. Reading of the night with Shola Thompson. I'm like, bro. Listen. But now we cooking. We don't listen to radio anymore now. Only when we're in. Me, I'm Uba, going to buy FM people. radio. I don't know about you. I, I honestly, I think, I'm I going to buy it. I think I to listen to radio. I don't just don't know why. Uh, it's the digital life. You're like, bro, what are you saying? You, the truth is, I sometimes get tired. I tire for um my playlists. That's one. Yeah. Two, I know you say the Spotify shuffle. I get it. However, there's just that thing about radio. First of all, the talk shows. Yeah. Um, the talk shows are, see, unmatched. You hear the raw, the raw Nigerian anger as it yeah. is. In fact, whether it's ang- whether we're ha- ha- angry, vibing, or you just, you know, just flat, you hear it on radio. I really, really love Love, love. I love Joyce. I love Joyce. Um, Joyce's um shows. Um, I know there are some people on Wazobia FM as well that are doing their thing or Nigeria Info. There are just some really nice radio stations that Classic FM on Sunday morning. What? Please, oh, yeah, there are many radio stations that I'm, I'm I've missed so much, and I don't know. Last I stopped listening to radio when um when I kill Sakujua changed from I kill, when he changed from Wild Wild Child to um, wow, well. listen, wow, child for real. <laughs> I think that was when I stopped listening to radio. Um, but yeah, I want to go back because there's a lot of exciting things happening on there. Um, and they get the news and they just feel the pulse of the people, and people keep calling. They keep, that's an industry that will always be boom, that will always have people um pat- patronizing them. You know, I want to listen yeah. to radio, so I'm going to buy radio. For sure. When I buy it, yeah. I will take a picture and send it to you. <laughs> <laughs> but please, ladies and gentlemen, if you are calling a radio station, please turn off the volume of your radio station. I mean, for the volume of your radio station, I beg. Well, in 2024, we are begging. We are begging. We are begging. The interruption sounds ah. nice, maybe. Yeah. Look by them. Okay, they let's get to... They want to hear into... themselves on radio. You know that that's Absolutely. the idea, right? They want to hear it themselves on know. radio. We are fine. We are fine. We are fine. We don't want to know. <laughs> it's okay. You're talking to somebody on radio. That should be enough for you. I understand. Yeah. Uh, before we leave this radio talk, did you see that, um, was it um, Arise TV or TVC? I'm not sure now. Where somebody oh. called the, I the TV I didn't watch station. It. Did you see the clip? I didn't watch it. I oh, saw the clip, but because I have, 
I have secondhand embarrassment issues, so I didn't watch it because I felt I would have felt <laughs> embarrassed for that movie. So I just decided Listen. not to watch it. I have second oh. secondhand embarrassment stuff. I got like, nah, See, I can't. I can't. You legit called the TV station. You know. It was a woman understand? calling you. Know. Yeah, so and what did that woman wear? That, what did that woman what wear? What nice shirt. A really nice, like See, chiffon shirt. That woman that called. Say, Okay. That would matter because if I show her things where people they wear, uh, to go mental. I'm not go wearing. <laughs> I thank you. I'm not wearing. Listen, the clothes I'm is wearing. Right wearing. <laughs> oh my god! No, oh. I was. Too, my mind was so blown. I, I did. I didn't know what to expect when I was watching that thing. But when she just when the woman spoke, I was like, "What? That's why Body you police. called Body Jesus police. Christ! No, 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 no! It's really something." I remember an old really, I remember really an show where somebody called like mm-hmm. that. It was a musical show. And the lady was the lady was the, like a co-anchor. And she had like uh-huh. this uh what do they call it now? Half top. I don't know what they call it. It's one that's like crop top. What's it called? Crop top, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. And she pressed her belly button, right? And the uh-huh. man called her, why are you dress like this? I can see your navel. <laughs> this is all, I'm like, oh god, me, I like this one. No, I'm like, no, yeah, don't about it. I don't want to say we're going to speak for your show sister. everything. Speak for yourself, sir. If you don't want to watch it off your television. Thank you. You understand you it. To, you want to see some skin, please. Thank you very much. Oh my god. Skin yeah. all the way, please. Show it if you have it. Show it if you have it. Okay. Weird. First topic. This is not a sad note. This is on a elegant note. This is on a great note. Celebrating the life of Nigeria's greatest female singer and one of the greatest. <laughs> Singers we had in this country, one of our legends. Yes. When we say legend, this is a legend. There's no comma. The legend is all caps. Boom, boom. Cold so, legend like this. Uh, uh, let me rewind to you know. Yesterday I told you that oh, I could not record because physically I was down, like because yeah. I worked so much. So yeah. immediately I called you. I tried to watch an episode of Friends and I slept off on the edge of my bed. Oh. I didn't even mm-hmm. not even the middle of my bed, edge of my bed. Mm-hmm. My body just shut down. It didn't take consent. Yes. It just shuts then, down. See, and it was around consent. like 10 or 11. Then by hmm. 3 o'clock, I woke up. You know, your body tells you you've had enough sleep that you woke that you uh-huh. should wake up. I woke exactly. up. I could not go back to sleep. The first thing I saw on my phone, Onyeka Wendo has passed away. I, I said, eh? I first closed my phone. I said, may I try to sleep again? But <laughs> I was trying to sleep. Something said, it's better you write, it's better you do a video for this thing now. Okay. You know? Wow. And the funny thing is that in my in my note app on my phone, I had mm-hmm. actually written that I was going to do an Okan Wear new video. Yeah. Sometime yeah, in July or August. Yeah. Sometime in July, I say, look at life now. Mama don't go now. We have to yeah. do it by force. And obviously, guys, if you've not seen my video about her, you can go and check it out. But um, it's on you know when and yeah, yeah, thank you very much. You know when you hear the death of some people and you're like, it's a lie. This can, this person can't die. This person is too big to Honestly. die. When you hear that Michael Jackson died, he felt he feels this way. I'm like Oyeka. Oh, ah, no, 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 no. That's our mommy now. That is my one of the moments of the show. Okay. No. no, it was terrible. No, my house was too broken. But I think I, I grew up. So much... Sorry, what do you say? I was, I was thinking like I grew up seeing Oyeka when I felt like she was part of my family. To be Everybody honest, so like hard. Was, Everybody so hard. Honestly, it was too sad. Mm. Um, what I, I wanted to say something. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, like she's, she's the 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 happy thing for me is that the last thing she did on earth was the thing that everybody knows her for. The thing she loves uh-huh, doing. Uh-huh, she was singing. Uh-huh. She was singing. You know, because I was wondering when I heard the news, like, was she ill? Was she sick? Exactly. Like, what happened? I saw this woman still dancing, jumping up and down the stage, like she was in her twenties and thirties. I'm like, mm-hmm. bro, this is life for you. It's just mm-hmm. a switch, and you're gone at the end of the day. And even as the news broke out early in the morning, two three a.m., she was already trending because Oyenka is not somebody that oh, is Oyenka. I'm like, I can't, I can't. You can't explain it. You know. Maybe Gen Z don't understand, though. Yeah. I mean, it's not that fault hmm. because they're not born in that era. But you put it on your TV station, twenty twenty five, and you're hearing Yo go go, Yo go go. 
Like, 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 like I don't have words. When I was young, they played one love. Too. Everybody knows one love. Long love is that song no. that every Nigerian knows. That every Nigerian knows. It's a national anthem. Is it a you and I? You and I will leave us in the movie conspiracy. All the way. Yeah, conspiracy. Yeah. So it was an original song back in the 80s. Then she now recorded mm-hmm, it mm-hmm, for that movie. Mm-hmm. Where she gave yeah, one of the best acting performances by Nigerian yes, nah. actress. That's uh, isn't that Ugo Shave with me? Oh, shave with me. I think that's the movie now. Ugo Shave with me. Oh, shave with me. I will mean, forget. I will, look at look at her in acting. Look at chain rea- chain reaction. Her Peter Doce, Benson. Those are A-list, A-list actors that finished working that they finished working that movie. Pieces work. You know when. Do something you know that ah, I don't try. No. You are speechless. You are speechless. And I like the fact that yeah, an icon. I like the fact that beyond the music, beyond the movies, she represented feminist ideals. She was oh, a feminist. Like, look at what she did with King Sonia Day. Wait for me. Family planning. Reproductive rights, responsible parenting. That is it for me. Like on that level, and the fact the fact that she had to deal with sexism and patriarchy in the music industry at that time and excel so greatly is my like if you see Oyeka in real life, you can feel that force, you can feel that aura. She was she was she was no come on, come on. I like it's it's uh it's, it's just crazy. It's just crazy at the end of the day. It's, she was such an amazing woman. I, I mean, I never met her. And I uh, I, I probably... Oh, I, met her. I met her twice. I imagine. I envy you right now because... When you can win who was... She was the mother... She was the mother for every... She was everyone's mother, in if, if I dare say, because she... Yeah. She, she said she spoke the values and she lived by them. I never, I, I don't think yeah. I ever re- really heard of any controversies that she was involved in, or um, she was. See, she she was just she was she was. I don't want to say perfect, but she was such an icon. She was she was great. And hearing so of good. her loss or like her her passing away, ah, mo. I don't know. God, I beg. Please, God rest her soul and you know, Lord, give her family the fortitude yeah. to bear this. What? Star studded. A great person. Yeah. Yeah. Before, before I tell you the story of how, of when she came to Pulse, uh, yeah. we can't overlook the, her career as a journalist. She was an award winning journalist for the NTA. She presented a documentary that highlighted corruption in Nigeria, what happened in Niger Delta region, not giving that region back its resources, giving it enough resources, the environmental pollution going on there. She did it in conjunction with the BBC and the NTA. And bro, you look at her life and you're like, madam, you're everywhere. You're in politics too. You're in media. You're in movies. You're in music. Yeah, so look at government chairman twice. Yeah. Yeah. Then, so, in 2016, I'm sure this people, some people might have heard this story. Well, back in 2016, on one sunny day in Paul's office, Paul's Nigeria, I think it was Sagi that announced it or somebody. He said, oh, King Sonia Day and Oyeka Wenu are coming to the office for an interview. This is Paul's that is filled with millennials and Gen Z's. Gen Z's. Yeah. Everybody went mad. Like, who are coming to the office? Are you joking? Yo. These are not people you say Sonia Day. People pay millions to see King Sonia Day. Screaming. And he's coming to the office. And Do you get what I mean? When they enter the office, the vibration changed. Huh. You could feel energy. the energy. In the air. Yeah, now let's go. So, when they say, I've seen, I've seen musicians, I've seen stars uh-huh. who have come to office for interviews and everything. Till today, no reaction has beaten that reaction. I love it. No reaction. Those bumps. Reaction. For real. I'm actually having those bumps. When they finished, when they finished their interview, the whole office, and I mean not only the 
the mid, the editorial staff, huh. marketing, no, wow. HR, everybody lined up and said they they had to take a picture with King Sonia Adiano Yenka. Greatness, bro. You know, you know they were shocked that young people still know them like this, that they can what? still hold them in respect. And I say, see, the two of you don't know who you are. The irony. Growing of up, life. you people were. You people were the people that are yeah, listening to you me again. I were really listening to you. <laughs> they and the fact that you guys now did, yes, and the fact that you guys now did uh, uh, wait for me. Oh my yeah. lord, you just killed everybody. Listen. You just killed everybody. My picture is actually up in that video I did. You can see the picture I took. I'm not watching the video. I've actually, I'm watching the video. Yeah. It's towards the end. Thank you, see, you for the end. putting it's just, me. What in the they call now? Subtitle on your videos, Ayo. We really appreciate you. We have to. We have to. Do, we have to do. <laughs> you know, that means been sticking. Thank it's you been so been much. Sticking. So I found out. So I found out that with the way, you, if you want, to, if you're using CapCut, right? Uh huh. There's an AI that automatically subtitles it for you. Interesting. Unfortunately, it it's very the thin. AI. Unfortunately, this, that's what I'm going to. Okay. AI doesn't understand the Nigerian accent. Of course, not. it only understands like eighty percent of the Nigerian accent. <laughs> so, it's just stuff like Oyekawenu. Uh, it will just murder that name. Jesus. Or sometimes when I speak, it will just you look at this. Is not what I said. So why is he saying this? It has said that. <laughs> but it's like seventy percent, eighty percent close. Anyway, uh, anyway, that's good. But anyway. Wonderful tributes. Everybody has been paying their tributes to the elegant stallion. See. That is the elegant stallion. That is so, the real C. Don't play. The real see. elegant That's stallion. The real place. From the president to everyone, everyone has been paying their respects to such a wonderful woman, such an impactful career. The legacy cannot That's even smile. be debated at all. God, only can we oh. smile. Oh. And that woman was a beautiful woman. Joking. I put up like four it's photos so of her soft. in the 80s. Her face card was never declining. Do her face card it? never declined. With her low cut she declined. gave us after. Just to let you us know, know that it is? long or short, yeah. I'm with you. Do you know what it is for a woman in the 80s in Nigeria to go, decide to go and do low cuts? Do you understand the fucking... audacity? For us, rebellious. <laughs> the I rebellion. Like, oh, well. Shout out to her. That is somebody that deserved a posthumous national honor if she doesn't have a national honor right now can we have a statue or like a short something for the national assembly something something to immortalize yeah they need a statue Uh uh-huh she needs a statue yeah also the national assembly should do a minute of silence for her these are the people you give a minute silence to respect what they've done for the the said why you are protesting tomorrow They'll be eating. And he said, "Why you are protesting tomorrow? We'll be eating." I said, "Ah, God, this guy, ah, very tone deaf." So sorry, it's ladies and gentlemen. What we've done now? What we've done now is segue into the in, <laughs> protest that you will be in by the time you are listening to this. Listen. So everybody knows that protests have been scheduled from August one to August fifteen. I think. Um, say no to bad governance. I think that's a hashtag. Yes, or that like is that. bad governance. Yes. Uh, people like Shore are spearheading the movement. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's nationwide. Yes. What has what has intrigued me about this movement is the response of the federal government. Hmm. Now they are quickly showing that they that, that they are working. Mm-hmm. Oh, look at what we've done! Look at what we've done. please people don't protest. Don't protest. Is now forty thousand naira. Isn't this the thing we say you people should be doing before? Central. Communicate with your people. Let us know what you've been doing. Huh. They'll be dragging their leg. No. What do you mean? Blah, blah, blah. Now that you've seen a little bit hula baloo, every day, to this, this um, um, yesterday evening, the, fe- the secretary of the government, secretary to the government, uh-huh. was he pleading to Nigeria, please do not go out and protest. We are working. This is what we've done so far. Walk Look at what we intend to do. Walk Walk out. Out. You people are... You people are are, are humble enough now to now to now to be finally us, uh, evidence of it. No, to finally mm. listen, first of all, because the government have been moving like they are not listening. And of course not. they leave us no choice. They've pushed us like say and I hate all that 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 um um management tactic where when when something blows up is now when you want to curb it. No. Why did you let it get to that yeah, point yeah. where do you understand? Like People are already. Do you want to kill us? That's the actual question. 
do you want to kill the Nigerian people? Do you want to kill the citizens of Nigeria? Nothing. Yes, so even he must die. Do you understand? School fees has gone up, fuel has gone up, hmm. dollar has gone up, accommodation has gone up, food what? has gone up, what transportation has gone up. What is it on general? I saw 1,300. I just opened. Yeah, Instagram. it's on top. Do you understand? Yeah, it's on top of the country. If one liter of oil is 1,300. Why? Do you, want to, do you want to really kill us? Are you, you say let the poor breathe, but now you choke us. Why? Now you choke he, us. He fast. knows what he's doing. Of course, you he know. He's a BDSM government. BDSM <laughs> government. <laughs> when we are nearly dying, yeah. they will give us air. We, <laughs> they will release our yeah. neck. <laughs> <laughs> on the other hand, on the other hand, the federal government has also been doing some curriculum moves, instilling fear, saying, "Oh, don't protest! You don't know what is going to happen. Mm. It can lead to violence. It can lead to chaos." Mm. Nigerian army is responding. Nigerian police is responding. DSS is responding. Khan is responding. Okay. It's like they are not target. Like everybody, just push the message of fear that you don't know what will happen. Mm-hmm. That hey, things are bad. Blah blah blah. Everything. You know, there could be violence. You don't know what will happen. Now. Earlier in the week, we now saw people, able-bodied people coming out to protest against a protest. How now? I have never heard of that one in my never. life. Never. Don't protest. That people are coming out to protest against a protest. Mm-hmm. See, if you explain Nigeria to a, straight, to a foreigner, Deficient. and in, the, the foreigner ex- understands, they're not talking well for you. No. They don't break and down for Honestly. you. Honestly. They're not talking the real story for you. No. Because really I am, I am, I am, I'm part of So you can come out of your house. Even though we know it's rented crowd anyway, uh-huh. to come and say you don't want protests. Come on. Come on. I be the thing Everybody is not guilty. You know they touch the only guinea 5k and Coca-Cola and Gala. I, I wish in a 5k. I see, I, I'm seeing 1,000, 2,000. What's that? What's that? What right people, now? You people have come again. You, you people have sold your votes for, for based on credit. So now come over one five. <laughs> See, mm-hmm. if they give it 200 naira for election, they give one thousand. It's an improvement, actually. If you it's really look at it, actually. it's an improvement. Yes, yeah. uh, they actually yeah. pull hand for you still. At least you'll be able to afford one or two now. <laughs> so, with this atmosphere no. of fear that they created, people are not G3. Offices are saying, Work from home now. We don't know what is going to happen. I'm not sure whether banks are going to work. Well, you're listening to this, to this today. So, Maybe banks are working, banks are not working. I know when I went out earlier yesterday night, uh-huh. the hold up was massive. It was crazy, I mean. Uh-huh. The markets were just more than normal. People are trying to stock up. You know, I know they don't pay salary, so people are stocking up. You don't know what's what happening. stocking up. We don't it's, know it's like there's the information uh-huh. that we're not all getting us. So people have money to people stock up. Bread and, so people with bread and pure water. You know, Pazawa, bread and pure water. God, I beg. Because mm-hmm. me, I don't know that stocking up. But my mom also called me and said the same thing that oh, they say we should stock up. Then the next thing she changed it for me. She said, "But how are people going to stock up? Stock up where? There is no money. There is no." You food. Know, like, yes. <laughs> when the girls are angry politically, the English uh, that comes out. No, this what I is hmm. this is a This is a violation of our fundamental human rights. Mm, as a, 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 <laughs> bro, since I know you. Bro, I don't know you. Now, now pitching you this. No, spare for now. Pitching you this. Go say spare for now. Spell it. They don't start giving you history <laughs> lessons. They don't start giving you history lessons. Do you understand? Something like this happened in 1978. I will know what happened to this country in 1978. Listen. May it even happen again. The way Tinobu is doing, I'm like, bros, calm down, calm down, calm down. We'll oh be okay. We'll be all right. We'll be all right. See. For I... those who are protesting, mm-hmm. please keep safe. Uh, wear slippers because in case you have to run. Ah. It's not the protest is not where you wear high here. Or <laughs> you not be wearing Chelsea me? boots. I beg in the name of God, not be fashion that they do there. <laughs> no Chelsea boots, no nine inch heels, please, please, please. Thank There's no on poor here. Wear your clogs and put your clogs on sport mode. Put your clogs on sport mode. So when you you don't reach your house. You don't reach your house. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, tu, 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 tu. Oh my god. See, but it's so funny you go to have... that Nigeria, when you protest, they shoot you. That is yes, wild. Now. Because you know what they're saying? They're telling you that why are you protesting? Exactly. The Lagos State government is saying, why are you protesting? Now, why... Give us a reason why you're protesting. 
I, I, I think that there's a, there's a protest no, no. also in the spirit of protest. Uh, there's a protest happening in Ghana as well for bad leadership as well. Uh, no, see, I said it. You I said, said it, it before. actually. What you happened, have said it. What happened in Kenya? What happened in Kenya is going to cause a lot see, of war. Such a domino effect right now because it's a domino effect. Yo, domino effect. It it's, it's moving everywhere. Is moving everywhere. Just in case you people want to protest and you go there and you find out that they're sharing rice and water, please let me know because me, I stay very close to Ikeja and I know there will be protests in Ikeja. Let me know so I can go and collect my own rice and my own <laughs> uh, mini rice. On jollof and soft drink. Uh, okay. Jollof and mini rice, please. Because me too, I'm protesting. I make sure that the, please make sure that the Fanta is cold, huh. it's chilled. I, I, give you party party. I, give you. I actually I look everybody has been calling me and telling me not to go and protest because they know me that's a believer in the Nigerian st- the state of Nigeria. Listen. Of our time. Listen. Of our time. <laughs> <laughs> I really, really first of my told my mom and I were having a conversation earlier today about the protest, you know, just really ban you know, exchanging thoughts to you know, you know, there's been conversations amongst um, the Igbo community about it was not going out to go and protest, you know. Oh, that's another aspect. Of you. That's another aspect. Another aspect of you, you know. Yes, I know. Please, you delve into it because it's the media stuff. You are really great with these things. But you know, my <laughs> mom, we're both talking. Yeah. We're having a conversation, and you know, she was like, "Oh, go, don't go outside." Or not, not because of Igbo or anything. She was just like, "I beg, go," you know. Me they know Kim I picking, and I said, ah, "Mommy, let me not even lie to you." I really can't even go outside because number one, all the all the body pain that I'm feeling right now is not humanly possible that I can stand. Ah, I your answers. I I trekked from third roundabout to the toll gates to go and shout they should free my country, Nigeria. <laughs> I'm not sure now that is possible because I don't the body pain is a lot. But do I support the protest? 101%. Because why do you want to kill us, sir? That is the real question. Are you, is your plan to create, do mass murder or what exactly? Um, make it make sense. Why exactly are you impoverishing the people? When the Nigerian, when the Nigerian politicians get, get, unlearn this level of corruption, that you're not giving the people what they what the basic amenities of life and you still want to kill them. When would they unlearn that character and know that for a system that works, they will probably even earn or get way more money than this? When would they learn not to steal from public fund? When would they learn? Like, I don't know. If the system actually works, people will have less, less people loitering and more people putting hand, their hands to work. But no, our story now. They, they don't send that one now. They don't send all that one. The actual is idle, and every other person is. We're all out on the streets vibing. It's crazy. People know the vibe. Bro. People don't invest now. Nobody get money vibe. Bro. You understand mm-hmm. now? Why the process? The, the, this process is sweating me so much. That Imos hopes or demise catching is is shooting people in Imos states. First of all, why? And very populated areas where there are. Douglas Road, all those areas, he's sh- they are shooting people. They're saying eh, there is unknown God men. Why? Hope Ozodima's case, eh? when this protest has gone, huh. we'll not focus on that man. No, we need Once... to sit on it, actually. We need to because sit on it. Because he seems like a very special governor. He is. He seems like a very special governor. Quite unique. Because if they allowed that, that man enter federal government, problem good deal. Hey. Problem good deal. <laughs> no, he, he, he can't even make his now. He's a puppet. He can't. They never uh, go far. That's what we said. But that's what we said. The governor that came with live band, where is he now? He's in Abuja. <laughs> and he's telling them that if I see you protesting, you'll be dead. See. Uh, so what you're what you saying concerning um, the Igbo the Igbophobia? Uh-huh. Uh, that's the new word now. That's the new term. Yeah. So we did something in our office, our bosses, because they're foreigners. So they we not told them oh there's a protest coming right and you know they were concerned they just mm-hmm. wanted to know the scope of everything mm-hmm. and how to cover the news objectively without um, also breaking any Nigerian laws and everything so we now did like a whole huge research on it 
And what I found out, found out is that you see that thing that Lagos State government did during last year's election, mm -hmm. where they played the terrible card. Mm -hmm. Almost that thing is ser more serious than ever now. Wow. Because when I was going through the underbelly of Twitter, mm -hmm. bro, you should come and see tweets. You should see tweets. I'm Tell like, me about this it is because project. I don't know. In, see, it, oh. I'll give me information as though I'm five because I don't know. When okay, so thank you. You see stuff like, see a story like, or maybe an immediate aid of the Lagos State government say, mm -hmm. oh, please do not protest. You know, Lagos is your own. Mm -hmm. They use those kind of words. Those kind mm -hmm. of words that Lagos is your own. Do not allow well, strangers to you. come and uh -huh. uh, do not allow strangers to come and uh, destroy what we've built over the years. Akiko. Are you not? And see, that one is even okay. Even though that's coded language, uh -huh. you understand? That is still, you know, you know. Uh -huh. You will not see the replies on that myth. Hey! Uh, please, uh -huh. do not come and destroy. If you, want, if you know you want to protest and cause chaos and violence, go back to your village in the east. Uh -huh. Or something, something. Imagine. behind so, That's so, so, the problem. So, at this critical time. Do, 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 do. At this critical time. Huh. The thing about this tribal that you are doing is that you think you are in control of this narrative. When this narrative leaves you, what it go cause? Hey, because every other side can do tribalism. Honestly. And some people take it, some people take it more rugged than you. Honestly. At the end of the day. That also Honestly. reminds me, rest in peace with Chief in Wayahu. Of the great in our oh, yes. national, he passed away during the weekend. That, that is, is it. So if you know me, I don't know him. Uh, before I knew him as part of like uh, um, uh, I know I destroyed him. Mm -hmm. I know I destroyed him. Oh, I, knew him. <laughs> I knew him because of the football club, the Wayawo National. Yes. He was a big, he's a big billionaire in the east. I didn't even know he was still alive until he ran for president of. Uh, Oh, and yes. I'm like, wow. I didn't know he was alive. I'm like, wow. And we could see how the man was um was doing like, was was like the go between between the federal government and the southeast bloc concerning the release of Inam the Kanu uh -huh. and the protests here and there and how Lagos State have used Igbophobia to attack innocent Igbos because they believe all of they are they are responsible for Peter B winning Lagos State during the presidential election of last year. Yeah, and as you can see, man, like I said, there's a huge amount of tribalism there. So I don't, I don't blame any Easterner, even South South Southerner, saying, "Oh, Omo, you know what? We're sitting this one out. You do what you got to do, and uh, you let us know as it is." You know what's really because, because, mm -hmm. so hold on, because if one Igbo person comes out, the narrative has changed. Is it more people okay. behind this yeah this violence? Uh -huh. Is there they are behind this protest? What they can't do in their states, they'll come and do in our states. Exactly. That is what they're going to say. Oh. And guess what? The unfortunate thing is that message already has an audience, an ignorant audience waiting for that thing to happen. For them to just say it like that. Like wildfire. Yeah. They're going to spread wildfire. I think that Igbophobia is the greatest sin of the Sonwalu administration. Undoing even over Elsa, over Elsa, even over Elsa, that was the greatest thing, honestly. Because to today, his media guys are still Milking perpetrating that, that thing, perpetrating that thing. You know, you hear stuff like, Oh, four kidnappers were, uh, were killed in Lagos or something, something from like a top government official, and you now say, Oh, and they all come from one particular side of the country. What are you now trying to pass across? What are you not trying to pass across? That is not the message somebody that is in the government should be pushing out. Exactly. It's not what a responsible person should be saying at all. Exactly. But we see this, and unfortunately, the masses, the Nigerian masses, who have been undereducated or have not even received education at all, believe these biases. Cook line and sinker. Cook line and sinker. It's just, it's just crazy. So... I I am in support of the boy people saying uh, they should not there are nobody should go out and protest and in solidarity I join my brothers in the east Obina and Chinidu that me too I I'll say is. tomorrow my name is which, uh, tomorrow my name is Nabdi I will stay in our house <laughs> you Thank actually you. look like a Nabdi or a Chukwudi because at the end of the day <laughs> no, Nabdi is fine thank you Inabdi because <laughs> at the end of the day at the end of the day bullets no no tribal. You yeah. go fuck you. You, go you see, you, you go chop bullets. Bullet no go ask you say who you be. Are you 
Man, are you for us? Are you against us? Honestly. You got to drop out. I beg. I get my house. Thank you. No, it's actually so wild. And I don't really, I don't understand why, why the government is trying to, or the Lagos state government is trying to push that narrative, or maybe the government in general, about evil people being That's targeted. Right. And all of that. Right. Huh? You, know, you know why they're pushing it. You know why they're pushing it. It worked last year. So they've not found out that. It always works, them. actually. To they be very honest. Out. So, to be fair, or to, to the list of my knowledge, uh-huh. you couldn't see this in the fascist regime, which was more reasonable. Uh-huh. Even I don't think Abode even Abode, as we criticized him, was not hey, bro. That exactly. one didn't even care. You know, he even said, Abode doesn't send anybody. That because one. he even said, that for years, he doesn't send us. He didn't even that get that time. He had other things to think but about. So, <laughs> but this so Olu, so Olu's government has played too much dirty politics for somebody who should know better. That's what Honestly. I'm saying. I feel like he's honestly just dancing to the tune of his puppeteers because I mean Obviously, um, how do you think he do how do you think he's doing two terms? Exactly. You know his second term was on second mm-hmm. term was on post. Exactly. So Fashola didn't nearly make second term. He nearly okay. didn't make second term. Me that went to one vote I'm I'm not voting for him, but let me not even like because why but apart from the voting, Fashola his party wouldn't his party there were movements in his party not to allow him to come out a second term for governor, despite how well, how regarded his first term was, mm-hmm. why he regarded his first term was. Some issues, I can't say on the pod. Of course. It was due to some last minute, uh, uh, look at this man, this man, the people love him, let him run again for a second term. That's how he did it. I'm yeah. see you, you know that one, that one, they never get in time, get out, get out, get out, get out, get out. <laughs> I'm going beg everybody from Buari. <laughs> now they really played that so they really did that they were saying because one time one time, powers one time. so see someone lose on on our post nobody claim why I also understand someone lose this thing uh-huh. I am not here to show I have ambition I don't have personal ambition I'm not looking for personal glory let me do my ATS may I <laughs> please I let me be going at the end of the day but I think that there are some moves he has made the answers move and the tribalism move. That has really that, put him in nah, a precarious place. That you can boldly say that he's worse in terms of uh, human rights and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Mm-hmm. He's the worst governor. He's the worst governor that me have seen for Lagos State. And that includes the military. That includes Facts, the military sir. ones I saw. Facts. Yeah. So, Facts. yes, sir, you can build, you can build metro line. You can build markets at that sell goods at lower prices for people, but if you do not treat people as human, that's copper's money. If not, yeah, if I won't lie though, that hundred k. <laughs> Please don't kill me. I, I, I nearly look for my NYC. Maybe I just squeeze hundred k for my hand. Just say, okay, oh, no. kill me. See, the bills will be paid. That hundred k. That hundred k. That hundred k. It will scratch the surface nicely. See, hundred k is nothing. Hundred k is twenty k now. Hundred k is nothing. It says ten thousand. It's ten thousand naira. Hundred thousand is now ten thousand naira as it appears. I know that. Tell you me. You spend hundred k. You not be blaming yourself. Huh. That's uh, uh, why am I not? Why am I not um, spending wisely? But you not exactly. calculate everything you spend. The inflation is not you. Yeah. I went to go and price well man. Well man, uh, well man, uh, capsule medicine. Plus, like mm-hmm. well man medicine. How much is it? Yeah, well man plus. It was like six k last year. It's now fourteen k. Do you know that uh, well woman plus is now twenty eight five hundred now? From the last time I bought it, the one I had in my say, house, it was sixteen k. As they say, women, as they say, women things they cost fast, man. No. Ah. When the man told me, I said, ah, thank you. I'm gonna eat fruit. It's fruit I'll be eating. Fruit is still, is still manageable. Thank you. Now supplements with a plan to buy them. You know, you can't just carelessly stand up and just go and buy it. Now you have to plan. It mm. actually it's part of my to do list for this week. I need to actually put my actually yeah. consciously need to go and buy it because twenty eight thousand five. That's thirty thousand naira now. It is. May I round it up? I round. I don't do what I say. I round it up. It's it's it's. It, it's you know, it's, you know, a can of Pringles. A can of Pringles. A can of Pringles is three eight now. 
<laughs> for unhealthy living again now, not even healthy living. Oh, mommy, I'm going to go and buy a banana this week, Sha. Let me be using it to give oh, myself oh. energy. <laughs> Because why organic natural, you understand? Is, natural is the best. Oh, this artificial real. medicine does not it's not the way, it's not the way for what facts. It's not even not it's not even good. too sweet like that. It was even there. <laughs> and now you look at how good food. I beg. We're all naturalists now. The truth is I actually really don't snack. I'm trying to so I try. I like popcorn. I really love to do snack on popcorn, especially cinema popcorn. But you see. You see this thing that is happening right now where nothing is even affordable. Not, literally, I go to the store now bearing in mind that I'm actually not coming back out with what I want. Like, that's okay. I, I'm actually, I, I'm trying to, I, I'm trying not to be comfortable about it, but I mean, it's the reality of what's happening. Because what you see to, in fact, anywhere you go to and you see something, just buy it. Don't say, oh, and if you come, because the next time you go back to that store, <laughs> first of all, if, if you see it, it's definitely not going to be affordable. Things are not the same as before. See, the level really don't oh, change. Yeah. When they talk about many years ago, we did dance. We are doing 10 over. We are dancing. We thought it was so cool. You know, you know, a prophet was coming. Do you understand? was such a prophecy god no things are expensive can you imagine such as tomato is over yeah. one thousand see such i i, I, I pity for the people i pity for the people below the line like how do they bro i you not have like eight kids or so how many kids that's mental for oh i bought i say bro. fanta it's a fun yes fanta fanta I give me sugar, it's 400. And that's not help me cut for my sugar addiction. You understand? Like, there's no need to that. My Water real is question last, last. is that, please, miss, uh, please, please, President, sir, do you really want to kill us? That's my question. Because I've thought about it so much today. Like, why? Why do you want to kill us? Eh? Why exactly are you out to unalive us in the full country? What did we do? Eh? No, it's really. I don't vote for him. I vote for him. I don't vote for him. And this Lagos, especially, say if we go, we went to one over vote for for Peter Obi. Ah, what a betrayal! Yeah, that, that, is, that next election, eh? Once you get to voting booth like this, what Agbero? What make it for? Jack you up. Yeah. Next boom now. Bro, I don't want to hear. You know what they call last night? That last night go down ninety percent. Ninety percent. Please, this country is really see it's okay right now if your mental health is actually being challenged because this country the, the you know how the external oh, you know affects now. the internal. Mm-hmm. You know what I do now? I don't okay. go to Twitter anymore. I don't because uh, Twitter now you see people moaning and groaning, oh uh, uh, protest yeah. is coming. I don't do I see now I love Snapchat and TikTok. Stay you see Snapchat, me. I now see what you see. You see, I right? see what you say about Snapchat. I, I curate what I want to curate. I see bodies. Do you I have the set mean? of bodies I look at. I curate, <laughs> I'm okay. TikTok, I used to go and laugh. I love it. No more. Honestly. No more. See. Come on, give me eyebrow pressure. Uh-uh. This. this week, I haven't been staying away from social media. I've been filling my heart with the word of God and inspirational mm. quotes because this, this next part of the year like this. I want to finish strong. You understand? I want to jump out. Uh, Let everybody uh, just know that I'm ready. That's what I want to happen. My four months remain. My um, four months remain for the year. I promise you, everything can change in one day. See, I already way my brain has been working so um, much. Uh, uh-huh. I won't like to what you said is very true right now. Yes, now one day like, is you can be complaining it. about something, something, something. Then the next week is like total opposite of what you're seeing. Like, See. Ah, all this is coming from but just keep on grinding keep on working make yourself put yourself out there uh-huh. since i started doing videos i started receiving some emails that are like ah, ah, really impressive okay okay we'll do more we'll do more now if, the, if that's what you want there is no humility there's not there's no profit in humility that's oh, it let me just do it on day. No, 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 no 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 if jesus could walk around jerusalem I'm be screaming every day. <laughs> then who are you? Um, <laughs> carry megaphone. I beg. Listen. Carry megaphone. Carry your markets. According to Lagos. Yeah. 
you know, I didn't I didn't know that what Kiri was like. We say did they Kiri him? But like, mm. but I moved like to Lagos proper proper. I was like, eh. Hey. So Kiri, your market mm-hmm. like say tomorrow no deal because, huh? Anyhow, you know that you want to down. fight for your life. Please fight. No shame in that, eh? Because yes, the, people, the people that are talking yes, about you, did they maybe say you you no get the still talk? When you still get the still talk, so. I think also. I think also people also look at ah, what will people say if I do this. Yes, what wow. people do I say that, bro. At your when you are taking your final breath, when you are taking your final breath in life, there's only one thing I got to remember. Did I do everything I wanted to do? Listen. Did I live a, 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 a life? That time you're not gonna remember who be A or B or C. So who do what you have to what? do. Do you understand? See, this oh. this next four months now, where I don't enter. This next four months. Now fashion I always do. I love it all. Please. Fa- now fashion. Mm-hmm. Fashion. That is all I want to do now. I love it. I'm just looking for how I can start doing uh giddy when my videos. Giddy, you know what they call giddy when my videos? No, what's that? <laughs> Never heard. It's called it's called G R W M. Get ready with me. Ah, okay. Giddy ah, it Giddy 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 it's given what I said that in one day. Said, hey, because of my giddy with my video, I like this one. This one is stupid. Yo, I was, I was like, I, I, I've never heard of this thing. How come I've never seen it anyway? Um, now, personal, my personal one is that I do now. Please, um, please, leave me. Don't ever ever see me. Leave me alone. Thank you very much. Man, I want to Thank shine. You. I want to shine between now and the end of the year in my career. In in my life in general, I attract abundance. I'm actually looking forward to Amen. the abundance that's about to come because um, I, I, was, uh, I've, I, I say it all too often these days, nobody dies. Plus, if it is if it's what I want, I'm going to actually get it. So I'm actually going to do it. Like, I don't want to... I don't yep. want to be winning in on social media and not winning in real life. I really want to win in real life, right? Ah, because my dear... That one really matter to me. If you are if you're advising me any stupid advice now and you're not giving me my daily bread, please no advise me. And not because no, no longer be accepting advice from people who I cannot take. Or no, let me put it this way. No longer accepting advice from people, yes, that I cannot take criticism for. And if I look at your life, it's not yeah. a testament to what I'm also looking at. No, your criticism doesn't matter. Neither does your advice. Please, no advice me. I beg. Ah, because, yeah. no, this next couple of months, I'm really looking at towards it with hope and expectations and optim- um. <sighs> this English, if I say it don't depend to you, I almost beat my tongue. Yeah, with optimism. Okay. And open <laughs> hearts. <laughs> That's yes. awesome. Okay. Now let's round up with our two our twin 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 brothers or twin sisters. Wait. Or twins in general. What what we're not talking about big brother ninja that has started. The, the oh, I know, that... I know some people I, I know I know I know at least this year I know two you contestants. Get it? And I'm very proud of myself. See? I'm very proud of myself. Mm. I know two contestants. I don't feel like is it the, the social DJ outcast. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, and, oh, and I think the Oh, I know those ones too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But one they're handy, I know them because we work together, uh-huh. block parties, some other exactly. events. Exactly. See, they they are the, see if you're looking for, if you're looking for two beds with high energy, not them. I love not it. Them. I, I am waiting for so when much. they do the party. When the DJ comes to come and perform at the party. Mm. I'd like to see their faces because We'll be like, oh, what is DJ no Sabi? Because we, we are bad as DJs. We know where to do DJ work. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah, but so Bibi Naja started. Season uh, nine people. Two sets. Two, like, you know, it, it's your people now come in twos. You come in a pair. The strategy. Right? Yeah. Um, strategy. I heard that Auntie and uh, Nev, Niece came in one. Yes. Uh, Auntie and one Niece came in. I love it. Uh, I'm really looking one, forward one, to one it. Sister, I had one sister left her family behind. I came to Big Brother. You will learn the hard way. is on the, on the show. A married couple. So I heard. Yeah. A married couple. People will learn the hard way too. Very soon. Jacuzzi hour will also be upon everybody. Please don't kill me. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah. But I haven't watched anything. 
because I'm not really tuning yet, but I would like to see what happens though. I like let to see me, what let happens. me give and please, people in Nigeria, give me Nigeria, please. Did we offend you? Why are there's no light skin girl? No, the there is now. There are now. Yeah, well, I don't no. See, when I see, I'm looking at ne- you see, if you're not naked, you're not naked. Nobody's like that. Please, please. When you see like this, we know that yes, I'm going to set the family house for you. They know that you have gone astray. You want wicked babes. I wicked know babes. it's still so wicked. wicked. Very wicked. Maybe. Maybe they'll see our white card guests, a white card, white card house. Oh, but they're 28 housemates. 28. Somebody said, somebody said, Biggie, they feed 28 people in this economy. Do you understand? Biggie, the man. Now, really, I'm, Biggie. Biggie, the man. You understand? Biggie, the man. That man. <laughs> Fine. 28. See. Oh, hmm. Anyway, Big Brother Niger season nine has started. Um, No Lose Guard season that's that's the tag for the for the season and as we already said we have on the episode we have on this year's season 28 housemates in pairs so that's 14 um sets of housemates all together um it's it's i think started on sunday yeah i watched the opening show on sunday really good i love one thing i think big brother has done really great with the selection this year I love the mix of individuals. Yeah, I yeah. love, yes. Oh, I love the mix of individuals. I love that we have popular faces also in the house. The Mbadiwe twins, the DJ, the Hani yeah. and, and Wani and Handy. Um, there are also some really interesting characters. I like the mix of personalities. Um, different people from different works of life in the house. I want to really see how this dynamism plays out. Um, I also want to see what Big Brother wants to do with pairing housemates because I think I heard um, they said uh, if if a housemate if you if, if you leave you leave with your pair or something I'm not I'm not sure um, but yeah I just want to see how the Big Brother is going to twist and turn this already um, the H O H games have happened and a custodian game um, the H O H for this week already as they hold is um at the Imbadiwe twins um and Zumba i think Zumba do you understand Zumba. some Zumba ancestral Zumba. home is in that house this year i'm really looking forward Zumba. to it <laughs> see uh <coughs> excuse me um they're also really interesting characters in terms of both male and female really interesting characters um Ndine, um was chosen by um the HOH for special treatment. You know how that that how big he does it that for HOH you can have like a person that you can invite to the HOH um condo and yeah, blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. So they chose exactly they chose Indine. I've have I haven't been watching too religiously since the um yeah, to the show since the show started, but caught a couple of clips so far. I uh, one of your babes is already falling for a guy in the house. Um no, script, no. Eh? Script. No, script, no, script. Don't worry. Eh, all right. Let's see how it goes. Um, I think it's honey handy, I think. Or is it one? Oh me, I can't tell them apart. I can't tell them apart. So, so I feel like I can. I've just not paid attention. One of them is voice that is can't even husky. They say that parents, they say that parents can't even tell them apart. So it's not me. Uh-huh. That's it. Once every three months. God, I beg. I don't know. I don't. Anyway, pe- people have started shipping already. Some people have started shipping. Um, I, I was guys, one of them. I'm actually happy they're in the house, by the way. Um, I'm excited they're in the house. I've seen them play before at his party. Don't mention about those guys. You guys don't know. There's a documentary about them. About these guys twins? To watch it, yeah. Channel 4, a UK company did um, a documentary Amazing. on the weak children of Lagos. Mm. So they did with copy. They did with Mbadiwe twins. Yeah, it's actually... You guys can watch it. I think it's, on, I think it's still oh, on I YouTube. Oh, I think it was Honey and Handy and One New. No, about. no, no, no. I'm talking about the weak children of... No, I'm talking about Mbadiwe twins. Ah, okay, okay. I'm really excited for this year's um um season um yeah episode that be season I be had the TikTok up. but yeah really really and all the pairs have names I've been hearing 
as at this evening when I was ro- watching their diary sessions, um, Onyeka's name, Chizoba and Onyeka, the checkers, their name is coming up a lot in everybody's conversation. Apparently, their energy is high, they're great. The Mbadiwe twins are also killing it with handling their tasks at the HOH. Week. Now, see first week. Yeah. Now, see first week. Going to do with them. I see a couple of days. You will not be getting mad. Yeah. I swear. Do you know, I love the early stages of this game because everybody's in high spirits. Everybody feels good. You know, just like forming bonds. Everybody's excited and, you know, all lovey-dovey, lovey-dovey, mixing up and shit. But, like, as the game progresses, um... You know what they see? I don't. I don't think I appreciate the way the button diary session would choke. But yeah, we're of here course. for this. You know. You know how Nigerians have been saying that um, there are three different types of Nigerians: the ones that are, um, are petty and are watching Big Brother, the ones that want to save the mm-hmm. country. I'm talking about the state of the country, and the ones that can that watch Big Brother and everything on social media. See, now maybe that's. I'm not going to be on social media watching, but listen, I'm going to support the protest and support Big Brother because we need balance in this country. We can do both. We can, we can do both, please. Do you understand? Yes. We can multitask. We say it's not multitasking. They say it's a sequential working or something. But yeah, mm. we can. Oh, English. You understand? The English. <laughs> My dear, we need to enrich our spirits so that we can be strong. That's it. But yes, yeah, boss. I'm here for it all, I beg. Because this this life now, Ofumbia, one time, I beg, as we did here, like, when Tino put a show she gave, nobody talk, well, all of a sudden, Big Brother started, and everybody is just, I beg, I beg, I beg, I beg. Let us, anyway, two, three, four, we're committing to giving you our own uh, thoughts on what's going to be happening in the house for the next 10 weeks. Yes. Okay. Yeah, committing. Are, are you committing? We need to commit to. I go try, I go try. They bring a light skin body. There are uh, now. This Onyeka babe that is changing, she's a light skin body. I go look at her. I go look at her. I go look at her. Worry, try. Uh, you won't be disappointed. I have great yeah, hopes so. in this in this year's Big Brother. I promise you. <laughs> All right. All right. Anyhow. Let us delve into flop of the week first. Yep, yep, yep. So on on Sunday, my mother called me mm. and said, Ayo, eh. Uh, I've not been able to call my other line. I said, why? He said, MTN has blocked it. I was like, oh, it's, I think it's all this. My man was like, old people again on our phone. Mm. Wait, I don't know what she's done with our phone. Now. She said they blocked it again. Oh, I go, you go to MTN office, they'll settle it for you. Mm-hmm. Um, I said, I seen late, late that night, people that a lot of people started saying, um, oh, MTN has blocked my line. MTN has blocked. I said, no, nah, ah, this is a joke. Mm. The next morning, when my mom, she called me. She said, I'm an MTN office right now. If you see the crowd, if you hate... I heard the noise. I was like, what is this? People. Apparently, MTN disconnected millions of lines and they gave an excuse of there has been, they, these people have not connected their SIM to their NIN. Mm. Right? Mm-hmm. And without any, I bring like, I be, just waking up one day, just mm-hmm. said, let's connect, disconnect everybody's line. And people were pissed. As people were should. so pissed that the NCC had to come out and say, I had to order MTN and other telcos who were involved in this to restore everybody's lines immediately ASAP. That's what's up. Sadly, before they said that somewhere in Festac or somewhere in Lagos, the people who were outside an MTN office were so angry that they pulled down the fence. I saw it. Too. They pulled down the security banner huh. and the fence. I was like, you see, Nigerians, see, they don't tell you something small, small, you know, here. Now, what did they tell you loud? Yes. Go hear it. You understand? You by force. Later that night, Mopsi called me and said, oh, she can call now, but there's still no... Um, she can't see browse. I said, by tomorrow morning, everything will be okay. Which they've restored right now. Thank but God. my mind is that, why do you just want to convenience people? Mm. At this time of, in our country, where already people started yeah, creating conspiracy ways. theory. Yes. Yeah, that's, why, why are you doing this now when protest is coming? You know, MC put out a flimsy statement again, later in the day, something, 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 yada, yada. The next day, they now close all their all their outlets, all their outlets. I'm like, no, no, no. A weekend man flees when nobody's chasing him. Exactly. No, no, no. Which but kind for, of behavior? For discomforting millions of Nigerians on a Monday morning, first of all, the weekend and a Monday morning, you guys deserve the flop of the week. Plus, open hand collect. No even argue. Everywhere you, <laughs> Everywhere, uh, you Everywhere you go. Everywhere you go. Everywhere you go. Everywhere you go, there was no network. There was no network. 
That is so yeah. wild. Prop of the week. Prop of the week. The Olympics has been happening. I've not watched more. I've not watched anything in the Olympics. I must be honest. Did you watch the opening yeah. ceremony you wanted to? I saw a bit of it and it was boring and it was controversial. Yeah. I was like, you know what? It was really boring. I didn't miss anything. Yeah. I didn't miss anything. Shout out to England. Shout out to China for hosting proper opening ceremonies. That's what's up. That people remember for years. Not those ones, yeah, show masters. It, they had people to be floating on water. Uh. No, put them in the gas stadium and let them carry the flag. You put them inside water. Raining. It was not even raining. It was not, it was not even good at all. No. Then you do a Passover. You do a reenaction of the Passover with um, with uh, people in uh, what do you call that thing now? When men dress up as women, Ugh. which one? I forgot in the English. Right? Oh, drag. When men dress up, yeah, drag uh, queens. Uh-huh. Like, come on, Christians were pissed all over the world. Like, what is this rubbish? Because oh, of that Olympics. was a whole other discourse. Because eh, uh, uh, discourse. The kind of uh, what are they calling conspiracy theories I've been seeing from that thing, and it's well, been really spinning. Me. Brought, you know, they already you know, really brought Illuminati and everything to yeah, you. So. but anyway. Anyway, <laughs> in this Olympics in Paris, our national basketball female team, the it's Tigers, crap. scored scored their first win in twenty years by Whoa. defeating Australia. Oh, please clap, 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 clap! I beg you, I beg you, because my energy is high. Where, 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 where the clap? Where the clap? Yeah, that's so sad. <laughs> Shout out to these beautiful women who decided that. You know, we could have just played for America. Gorgeous. I think most of them are American. Uh-huh. But they just said, you know what? Let's do for let's do for the for, for our home country, our father, our motherland, our That's what's up. You and they defeated Australia. And I'm like, yeah, go Queens. Woo! Shout I out to it. you again a day. I personally don't believe that Nigeria will bring any medal home. But any it's small victory we can collect. Yeah. Any small victory that we can collect, let's collect it now. See, Thank it's you now very much. small wins. Shout out to the Queens. To Queens, me, I'm personally waiting for volleyball to start, especially female volleyball and uh, beach volleyball. Uh-huh. That's what I'm waiting for. Especially yeah, Brazil I'm... and uh, <laughs> Brazil and Dominican Republic. I will be eating popcorn and watching it in 4K. Listen, 4K HD. So oh, my man. Support in this sport. Thank you. I'm going to go and learn how to swim because every Olympic, I'm always looking at the swimmers. You know how they used to just dive and just like, just like almost finished through the they've water. Almost finished. Eh? I think they've almost finished because people are they winning medals. I think already. so. Yeah, I think so. But like, yeah, I I'm not watching judiciously as I want to, but see, see athletes are at they're unicorns, literally, because that level of discipline, ah, but I beg. We can only Somebody train. said something. Somebody said to tell something that imagine an Olympics where it's not, it's not for professional athletes. Mm. They're just for normal people. <laughs> that one day you receive an email or a letter in your post bo- in your post office box or whatever and say, you've been called to participate in this year's Olympics, right? <laughs> and we'll see average people Doing all this, all this turn, all this competition. See, See laugh with play. Do you understand? Laugh is that gymnastics own that will first of all bust my belly? Uh, <laughs> people will break. People will break their necks. People will go paralyzed. What? It's, it's, it's like definitely. You, you, will die. you will die. Yeah. You will die. God you will die. I beg. Because what they should not. They, if it's running, you know, javelin, short put, long jump, all those things, it's still understandable. No. <laughs> javelin. Some people keep some people. <laughs> javelin and short puts. You just gotta javelin. Gotta hit somebody on the head or short puts. Gotta break somebody's jaw. I went. When, the, when I did beg, you do intense sports in secondary school, primary school? What did you? What sports? Did, what um? What what um? Uh, what did you used to do? You should, you should know my. You should know my sports. Track and field. There's only one sport I did. Clapping. <laughs> Woo, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I'm dying. Ooh. Now you don't kill me. <laughs> oh my! I used to run as a child. I was. I used to run marathons. Our, our yeah, hundred meter out races, you. I promise you. Ah, it was so my thing. I sack, you know, international uh, meter sports now, sack race, all this. Mm-hmm. But marathons and hundred meter r- races, that was my thing. But after a while, now if I run small like this, I just tire. I, I need to actually mm. grow the reading back because I actually used to love to run. And I never talk about it because. Now I don't know how to run. I haven't run in a long time, but I love to take walks. God, 
if you know me, I never say no to a walk. I will definitely take a walk. So, um, to gaining back my running and learning to swim. Cheers. <laughs> okay. That's our prop of the week. Shout out to all the Nigerian athletes there. Doing us proud. That's you know, it. Nigeria loves you. We love Great you guys. The federal government loves you. Or Nigeria uh, loves you anyway. The federal government. This guy, kind of federal government, if they love you, run no. Run. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to send us fan mail, you can do that at contact. Uh, I say contact. That's I my only email like address. Contact you. Send us to fanmail at fanmail at com. Send us your fan mail. Send us release therapy. And read them on the next episode. Yes, yes, yes. And follow us on every social media platform at Two Three Five Essential Podcast. We love you guys. Yeah. Thank you. One love. Peace out. See you next week. Bye.